at the fullback spot. They're loaded along at the halfback position. Well, remember the Navy game. Hewitt was out most of that ball game. Ronnie Makeda stepped his game up and brought Army back from 18 points down to get the berth here in this ball game. All-time bowl appearances. Impressive. 25 for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn won the toss, chose to receive. Robert Baker and Eric Olson back to receive the kick. Baker at the goal line, and Baker with a nice return to the 26. A 26-yard return. There is the quarterback for Auburn, Damian Craig, a junior. You look at his numbers, 54.5% completion rate, Rod. Nearly 2,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 10 picks on the season. Well, the key for Army will be keeping him in the pocket. If they let him get outside, he can wreak havoc. First play of the Independence Bowl. And from the shotgun is Damian Craig. He can throw, and he goes up top to a wide open Tyrone Goodson down the sideline and knocked out at the 25. And Rod, you know Army was working on their option, trying to contain their quarterback Damian Craig on the first play, he goes deep. Well, you know, they got four receivers. You see the quarterback there, nobody in the backfield with them. They're just going to drop back and throw the ball. This is almost man-for-man -man coverage, and with Auburn's speed, Army has a real disadvantage. They can't afford to let their defensive backs get locked up man-to-man -man on Auburn's wide receivers. 48-yard hookup from Damian Craig to Tyrone Goodson. This time, Craig tucks and runs wide open running room at the 15 and a nice shoestring tackle at the 13-yard line. Kotwika, number 44, Ben Kotwika made the tackle. You look at Auburn's offense, of course, Craig, the fine quarterback in the backfield along with McLeod and Rusty Williams. The wide receivers, Bailey Goodson, the big 48-yard reception, and the tight end is McCovery, a good line of James, Riley, Kiger, Thomas, and Jim Rowe. First and 10 from the 12 yard line. Again from the shotgun. They swing it out to Willie Gaucher. Eichelberger made the tackle. Army defensively up front angles Estes, Colin Kearns, and Eichelberger at 6'3, 225. Really a linebacker. The backers are King and King, no relations. And Katwika. Gay, Tyquinko, Brown, and Mullins are your defensive backs for the Black Knights. Second down, seven from the nine-yard line. Opening drive here in Shreveport. Damian Craig having his way early. The little flip to Karsten Bailey inside the five. To the three-yard line. Call it the four. Well, the problem for Army right now is that this game is starting out just like the Syracuse game did for Army. And Damian Craig is doing a very good impersonation of Donovan McNabb. McNabb came out and threw the ball deep, got his, field, his team down the field, and they scored early. Craig is doing the exact same thing. This is just the way Auburn drew it up. Auburn in the red zone, 39 of 40 on 80%. 30 touchdowns, nine field goals. They're knocking on the door. Third down and short from the three-yard line. Double tight end formation. And the pitch to Beasley, the fullback, to the one. Uh, Colin Kearns was the guy who came in and made the play for Army that time. Yeah, he's a guy who goes at about 266 pounds. And watch him. He's going to show up in the middle of your screen, penetrate. There he is showing up right now, making the play. Nobody was able to get a hand on him, and he was in the backfield. Kearns is a guy who's quick enough to cause some problems for Auburn today. Been around a long time. Three-year letterman, a senior from Kenwood, Texas. First and goal from the two-yard line. The pitch, Beasley. High jump to tackle and was caught behind the line of scrimmage at the eight-yard line. So a five-yard lo loss and good active pursuit. 
Yeah, but it was Larry Angles, the guy who really made the play. I mean, you talk about the Army defensive line. Look at 76 to the right of your screen there. He shows up and makes that play. He beats the tight end, that time Jesse McCovery, and got in the backfield, and that disrupted the play. He didn't make the tackle, but he forced the play wide, and that's exactly what you have to do if you're going to make plays on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Angles plays at left defensive end spot 6'4, 250. Grove City, Ohio is home. Second down goal from the eight yard line. Damian Craig again in the shotgun. Lost his footing as he tried to set up. You don't know if he, right, if he wanted to throw the ball or if he saw some open space up the middle. Yeah, it looked like he wanted to run the ball, but, you know, we were talking about the field before the game started. It looked like a lot of guys were slipping out there, particularly the Auburn guys. And fast guys have a tendency to have a problem when the field is like this. You see, you see the mud right there, you know. That's a soft, soggy field. And then you have the, sh the, s the fast guys can't get their footing real well. The big, slow guys don't have a problem with it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Third down, goal from the 14-yard line. Damian Craig up top, three wide receivers in the end zone, couldn't find, couldn't find a man, incomplete. And that brings up a fourth down and goal from the 14-yard line. Well, one of the criticisms of a four wide receiver offense is that you can't run the football when you get inside the 20-yard line. That you have to be able to do that as you take a look at Jared Holmes, a great kicker. Jimmy Gallagher transfer from Hines Community College in Mississippi. This is a 31-yard field goal. And a line drive kick is good from 31. So Auburn takes the opening kick and drives and picks up three. 10.59 to play opening quarter. We'll be back after this. ESPN presentation of the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl is presented by the Twist and Edge Trimmer Edgers, two tools in one by Weed Eater, and in part by American Airlines. Something special in the air. Hey, Craig, this is the A-10 tank killer we saw yesterday at Barksdale Air Force Base. And right there, that's that machine gun, you know, I was playing around with. And then over here, you got these bombs and things that you were dropping. And I had a lot of fun flying that thing yesterday. You did. You did. I, I understand, though, the uh, the American Express card will not cover that. Uh, don't tell the folks at ESPN uh -huh. about the invoice they're going to get. Uh, we were treated so great at Barksdale. The largest B-52 base in the country, and I counted at least 25 or 30 of the big ones sitting around yesterday. Oh, it was more than that. You know, as far as your eyes could see, oh. there were B-52 bombers. Auburn went nine plays, covered 60 yards, and Jared Holmes kicked a 31-yard field goal to put the Tigers on top here early in the Independence Bowl. Ron Thomas, five yards deep. And so the Black Knights will start up at their own 20-yard line. Let's go downstairs, talk to Merrill Hodge. Merrill? You know, Craig, you've seen a little slipping going on down here, and the field is a little wet, but really, all in all, pretty good conditions. Something to be aware of, the field goal that was just kicked was kicked to a field goal that is a little crooked. And also, the hash mark should be in college at the three-yard line. It is marked on the two-yard line for extra points. So something to be aware of here in the game, especially if it comes down to a field goal. So a crooked field goal. Well, you see, you see that, Craig? That, that should be at the three-yard line. That circle we had there on that hash mark. Our first look at Army on the ground. And they pick up five yards. Demetrius Perry gets the start of the fullback. And let's talk about Makeda, the quarterback. 63% completion rate. Nearly 1,000 yards through the air, but... Very dangerous run, pass, you name it. Yeah, smart guy. He can impose his will on a football game as he did against Navy, bringing his team back from 18 points behind to get to this bowl game. Second down four from the 26-yard line, and now a quick timeout called by Ronnie Makeda, the senior out of Mesquite, Texas. We'll step aside. 10-22 to play, opening quarter. 10.22 to play, opening quarter. After the timeout, Army steps to the line at the 26, looking at second down and four. First man up the middle, 
the fullback, Demetrius Perry, and a first down for the Black Knights. Spikes made the tackle for Army offensively. The quarterback, we've talked about this young man, very effective. Makeda in the backfield, Williams, Brizick, and Demetrius Perry taking over for Joe Hewitt. We should see Hewitt today. Ron Thomas and Lashinsky will get their hands on the football plenty today. And up front, not big, but effective. Beard, Chadwick, Scott, Inc., and Frederick. Again, Makeda rides Perry into the line to pick up a three, maybe four, to the 37-yard line. Defensively for Auburn, up front, Dorsey, Brumbaugh, and Leonardo Carson out of Mobile, Alabama. Carson, a freshman, the linebackers, pretty darn good. Reese, Neal, Spikes, and Mostella, a young defensive back of Bray, Houston, Ware, and Creighton. Ware and Creighton, Rod. Freshman. Second down, six. Makeda, the keeper, first down to the 45 yard line. And a little bit of slip and a little bit of slide on that play. You know, Craig, you know, you talk about the option. One thing that people don't normally notice is the splits of the linemen. Look at all the space in between the offensive linemen. What that does is it spreads out the defense, and it makes it easier for the linemen to block, and it makes it tougher for the defense to get a handle on the option. So you'll see those wide splits all day for Army. First down from the 45-yard line. Lakeda wants to throw over the middle like a dart. An incomplete. Rodney Creighton on coverage and going to Lashinsky, who's a pretty good ball control guy at tight end, made 17 receptions on the season, but that one looked like it popped off his pad. Yeah, well, <laughs> well he's more than just a ball control kind of guy. I don't know uh, what that was a minute ago, but there you see some of the cadets. Lashinsky is a guy who is good enough to play in the NFL. You know, he's a big, good blocker and a good receiver for Army. Many pro scouts rank him uh, one of the top three, maybe top five tight ends in the country. Army back to their ground game. Perry, the ball carrier. Ricky Neal, number 50. You know, the interesting thing about Lashinsky is that when he came out of high school, he wanted to go to Northwestern. He was recruited there, and then Northwestern had the coaching change. Gary Barnett came in and said, well, you know, we, we got to start all over if we're going to recruit you. Lashinsky got discouraged. Army stepped in. He winds up here, and he is considered a top prospect, as you mentioned. Third down and six. 49-yard line. Okay, on the option. And a good read defensively by Auburn. Charles Dorsey stayed at home. The big sophomore left in. What, 292? He dug his toes down and moved around pretty nice and uh, con did nice contain work. Well, you know, you worry about young guys for getting their assignments. Well, that time, Dorsey did nothing of the such, of the certain. He was right there, played off the block, got in the backfield, made the play, and Auburn was awfully concerned about their young guys for getting their assignments. Fair catch called, bounces into the end zone. And so, a 52-yard kick. Later tonight on ESPN, Tim Duncan leads number two ranked Wake Forest against Keith Van Horn and the seventh ranked running youths of Utah from the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. Check it out tonight, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific only on ESPN. Yeah, that Keith Van Horn Ooh. is a real player. He could have been a pretty good tight end. Yeah. <laughs> Chose to come back for his senior season. Auburn with the football and a three-point lead. 7.51 to play first quarter. All game long, Damon Craig has gone from the shotgun formation, and it's been very effective. Karsten Bailey pulls down the nice throw. Bailey, a sophomore out of Sharpsburg, Georgia. Well, right now, Craig, bad combination for Army. No pressure on the quarterback and soft coverage in the secondary. So long as that keeps up, Craig is going to have a career day. First down at the 32-yard line. Craig, good protection again. This time, though, he throws to the post, but his wide receiver broke outside. By that time, Army went to a little bit more pressure that time, played their guys a little bit closer, 
Here you see Terry Bowden who's thinking in terms of getting the ball down the field. He wants to take advantage of the mismatch he has out there at wide receiver. Army simply doesn't have the speed to run with the Auburn guys as you see what Craig has done already. Four out of six for 69 yards. And again from the shotgun, second down 10 from the 32. First down, he dances out of trouble. Oh boy, wide open running room, and he can sprint at the 50, at the 40. Still on his feet to the 41 yard line. He cut back inside at the 40 and then lost a yard or two, but wow, wide open, wide open run. A 26 yard pickup by Damian Craig. Well, remember a couple plays ago, we talked about the soft coverage. Look, they're up now. They're playing a little man bump. They got guys behind him. Guys are going to get back and turn their backs, and that's going to open up the lane for Damian Craig to get down the middle. When the defensive backs are playing off and playing man coverage, they don't see the quarterback run. Therefore, they can't come up and make tackles, and a guy like Craig will beat you. Damian Craig scoring eight touchdowns on the ground this season. Dumps it over the middle, wide open. Marquise Cooper. Cooper, a freshman, a true freshman, a high school All-American from Miami. He's going to hit the old, uh, the old man age of 20, by the way, uh, Rod, uh, January 15th. Oh, would it be nice to be 20 again? <laughs> yeah, but what about that? Only 156 yeah. pounds. His mother must be a little bit concerned <laughs> when he's out there with all those big guys. But don't worry about him. He's quick enough. Second possession of the game for Auburn, and uh, they have just been up and down the field. Craig, protection, the throw, incomplete. Coming back was Tom Mullins. Nice job to knock it away from Tyrone Goodson. Yeah, Mullins got away with using his right hand a little bit that time, though. And he grabbed with his right hand and used his left hand to knock the ball off. And that's what you're supposed to do, but you can't grab too early. You'll see him come across with the left hand, but the right hand had Goodson's hip. He got away with it that time. You'll see it from this angle. Watch the right hand. Yep, he's all around him. Comes off with the left hand, knocks it down. I like it, though. Short yardage situation. Third down and two. Craig could not turn the corner and coming down the line was Garland Gay. A senior out of Houston, Texas. Well, Garland Gay will hit you and he can make big plays. Remember, he had a big interception against Navy that preserved that victory which propelled Army into this bowl game. Fourth down and short. And remember, this run defense by Army Rod ranked sixth nationally, giving up only 89 yards a game. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good decision here for Terry Bowden to go for it, though. Very short yardage. His team's been moving the ball. You want to get ahead of an option team to take them out of running. Double tight end, the formation, fourth down, and just about a yard. And a yard and then some Fred Beasley over the top. He followed uh, his big man, Leonard Thomas, at 289, Jim Rowe, 294, the right guard and the right tackle. And that time he did a pretty good job of handling number 72, C.W. Estes. Now, he is a great football player, not just for Army, period. He's a guy that can get in and make plays, and they handled him on that play. It'll be a matchup worth, worth uh, watching the rest of the ballgame, Craig. First and 10, Tigers at the Black Knight 29-yard line. Great, good protection again over the middle, wide open. Touchdown, Tyrone Goodson. Well, Craig, there's nothing fancy about it. We talked about this. When you have man-to-man -man coverage, if your athlete is better than theirs, you're going to beat him. And Goodson is quick, he's fast, and if you have somebody on him that can't handle him, trouble. Plenty of time for Craig. Nobody around him. That's just too long to hope for somebody in Army secondary to cover that man. 17th touchdown throw the season for Craig and the seventh reception for Goodson. The extra point, Jared Holmes. Now 44 of 46 on the season. So far, it's been all Tigers here in Shreveport. 520 to play, first quarter. Sixty three degrees a kick foggy and cloudy today ten nothing Tigers over Army. Let's go downstairs check in with Merrill Hodge. Hey guys the the Auburn coaching staff is really harping on their players. Listen we got speed use your speed beat these guys with speed that play right there raw speed. Raw speed indeed. And a squibber. 
taken at the seven yard line and breaking outside Ron Thomas well he came out of a pile and takes it to the 44 yard line a 36 yard return he looked pretty good on that run too he's been nursing a bit of a bad hamstring for a while but he doesn't show any of that there you see him pick up this ball watch how he sucks everybody into the middle and then he makes his way to the outside and this is pretty good speed Auburn can really fly on their special teams but Thomas can fly a bit himself now don't let uh, Army fool you now these guys they do uh, some big things in the classroom, but they like to be called football players first. They can play. On the option, Akeda rode the full back, pulled it out, and got it to the 49-yard line. Ricky Neal made the tackle. Ricky Neal, how about 111 tackles on the season? That's over 10 stops a football game. Yeah, and he's one of the more senior players for Auburn. He's a junior. You know, they only have two veteran players out there, a junior and a senior, and then they have nine collectively freshmen and sophomores out there. A pick of five, second down five from the 49-yard line. Perry, the ball carrier, close to the first down. They needed to get to the 46. And Charles Dorsey came over to make that tackle. Craig, you know, it's really important for Army right now to stay with their game plan and to make the Auburn offense cool its heels. Keep them on the sideline, run your wishbone, run your power running game, eat up some of the clock, and get your confidence going. You know, we talked to Greg Gregory, the offensive coordinator yesterday for Army, and a well, very confident guy. He's been around the program for 15 seasons, and he said, hey, Rod, Craig. Yeah, they, there if, he is right there. If we get down 10, we do not change things. We just go with the exact game plan we've uh, we've been working on all week. Well, he fully expected to be able to move the ball against Auburn and, and would be quite shocked if they don't do it and if they don't put up a lot of points. First down by the nose. And there's the head man there. Mr. Sutton, head coach of Auburn, a guy who had his contract extended recently. He'll be there for another five years. The Army head coach, I believe, I think that's at Auburn. His contract through the year 2000. A lot of coaches work year to year, Rod. Okay, to the pitch. Fumble. Still on the ground. Still on the ground. Picked up Tigers. Brad Ware. And it's getting as bad as it possibly could get for Army. That's their 28th fumble this year, the 12th fumble that they've lost. It was one of the things we talked to them about yesterday, and they said, you know, we really don't turn the ball over. We don't worry about it much, but we've got a wet field. We've got Makeda coming out to his left. The ball is on the money, but Thomas just drops it. It's right up around his face. He could see it clearly. He just didn't handle it, handle it very well, probably took his eyes off looking up the field. Third fumble recovery for Ware, and it sets up Auburn in fine field position to lead the nation in those takeaways. 37, and the turnover margin. Wow, oh, plus 15. Yeah. And Rod, again, we see Damian Craig in the shotgun. He's bought himself a lot of time in this football game so far. Over the middle, Gaucher, Willie Gaucher made the reception. Well, it's important that Thomas keep his head in the ball game, and everyone's going to try and pick him up. You don't want one of your primetime players to get discouraged early in the ball game. He can't go into the tank. Move on with it. Play better. Five wide receivers for the Tigers. Second down, three. Again, from the shotgun. Tiny pass, and falling on that wet turf was Karsten Bailey. Tell you what, Bailey was wide open. Five receivers. What type of defensive strategy uh, do you have to come back with if your army with five wideouts? Well, I think anytime you have five wideouts, you have to attack the quarterback. There's nobody in the backfield to protect him. You go after him. But that time, number 68, Victor Riley for Auburn did a good job of picking up the blitz off the corner. 256 yards allowed per game today already. 140, and we're still in the first quarter. Again, the pitch and throw. Damian Craig hooks up with Robert Baker in traffic. Tom Mullins made the stop. And, and Craig, that was the first time that they actually put a hit on Damian Craig. 
If Damian Craig is not knocked around, he's going to have a great day. And he just got up for the first time. He completed the pass, but he did get knocked around. Again, the Tigers with the five wide receiver set. Out of the pocket comes Damian Craig. He's dangerous on the run. Throws incomplete down inside the 15-yard line. Picks four. The intended receiver, number 89. Estes and King provided some pressure on Craig. You know, you have a real dilemma as a defensive coordinator. If you put pressure on Damian Craig, he may run away from you like we saw him do earlier in the ball game, and he can almost go for a touchdown. But if you don't put pressure on him, he's going to sit back there and pick you apart. Army defensively wanted to stop the run, force, and force Craig to throw. That time, they did incomplete. Second down, 10 from the 21. Craig in the corner. Overthrows his intended receiver, Robert Baker. Donald Augustus, one of the best cover men for Army over on the far side. But right now, Army said enough is enough. You'll see them come with pressure now. They have determined they've got to get to their man. See, man-to-man -man coverage, one free safety. They are going after the quarterback now. They're not going to let Craig sit back there and pick him apart. More pressure, pretty good coverage. That's the first time they were successful at it. Making the early switch down 10, 3-11 to play. First quarter here at Independent Stadium in Shreveport. Craig again from the shotgun, again goes to that far sideline. Flats come out. There was a bump and a push. The catch by Baker and Tom Mullins. May have been the guilty party, number 17. Well, Mullins got there so quickly, he didn't know what to do, so he just kind of bumped into the receiver. I mean, if he had stepped in front of the receiver, he would have picked that ball off and might have gone the other way. Interference on the defense. It's five foul. Ball in place at the five foul. First down. Jim Fogle Tance, our referee. Yeah, the second time he's been flagged for pass interference. Watch the left side of your screen. Try and watch the end of the play. There you're going to see a little contact there. You couldn't quite see it from that angle, but Mullins was pushing with his right hand once again because he got there so quickly. Tigers come out with their four wide receivers set, and the lone back, Fred Beasley, number 23, first. And 10 from the 11-yard line. Damian Craig tucks and runs wide open. Oh, he's upgraded at the three. Fumble! Army has it. It was Ben Codwick at number 44 who really put the hit on Damian Craig. And Cobb Wiga is not a big guy. He goes at about 200 pounds, about 5'11", plays the inside linebacking spot. 44, the middle of your screen. Watch the hit. There is the hit, and he gets a little bit of help from Robert Brown, number 18, as well. But that man is a fire plug. He's a hard hitter. And yesterday at the luncheon, he was talking about just hitting the quarterback, hitting the quarterback. You got to hit that time. Robert Brown picked up the loose football. So Army comes up with a big hit to start, stop Auburn. 2.56 to play. Tiger showing blitz. Long snap cap. And the Black Knights just say, we're going to pound it. We're going to just run right at you to the eight-yard line. Demetrius Perry, the fullback. There's the man who made the big hit again, Ben Kodwika. Man who wanted to go to Michigan. Take a look at his nose there. He's already, got, he is already, see that? He is already bleeding. He, he said it was going to be that kind of ball game for him, and he's already into it. But he wanted to go to Michigan, visited Michigan. They didn't offer him a scholarship, ended up going to Army. Five-yard pickup, second and five from the seventh. Lakeda tried to make the turn. You can see that left foot just nothing to grab onto. That's the area that you were walking around on earlier today, and you pointed out that it was really muddy over there and really slippery. And Ronnie Makeda didn't realize it until just now. You know, from our vantage point, it doesn't look that bad. There's no standing water, but this, this grass surface has taken a lot of moisture the last few days. A lot of rain here Saturday night and Sunday that just kind of stayed around. Third down, five from the seven.
not much. Demetrius Perry, the ball carrier, trying to find something off the right side behind Rick Fredericks and Jeff Ink. For Army will not change from its game plan. They will always run the option, even if it's third, eight, and third and five or whatever, because they believe they can pick it up. It all depends on what the quarterback sees and the read he makes. That time he gave it to the fullback, and it wasn't the right read. They didn't pick up the first down. Scott Lord back to punt the football for Army two yards deep. Robert Baker standing at midfield, takes a bounce, lets it roll by. This is a huge break for Army. Huge break. Tigers take over at the 31-yard line. Well, tomorrow, the Big Ten meets the SEC. 16th-ranked Alabama battles 15th-ranked Michigan at the Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida. Gene Stallings coaches his last game for the Crimson Tide tomorrow, 11 Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, only on ESPN. Pretty good ball game. Gene yeah. Stallings, Lloyd Carr, you know, two good coaches, two good teams. New Year's Day, pretty good, huh? 1997 almost? Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Under a minute to go, first quarter, 10 0. Boy, look at this. Damian Craig finally goes under center. Five step drop over the middle, complete. Gose has been his man in this opening quarter to the 37 yard line. Let's check in with Merrill Hodge. Merrill? Thanks, Craig. Hey, Craig, with me is Cherokee Roan, 6'8. 250 pounds. I'm 6'1", 210 pounds. A lot of times people think in football the bigger, stronger guy is the better football player. Well, listen, football is not played up here. Football is played down here. And when you get down here, it's about leverage. I'm the smaller guy, but if I get up under Cherokee, I can win a lot of battles, even though I'm the smaller, weaker guy. Back to you guys. Hmm. Merrill doesn't look too small or weak to me. I think he can <laughs> still play. <laughs> oh, he knocked some people around, didn't he, in Pittsburgh and Chicago? Pitch play. Rusty Williams nearly broke it inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. You know, Merrill makes some good points, Rod, because this team, Army, is undersized when you take on the Tiger front. Yeah, and Merrill is right. You see the 47 pound difference there, but, but what's happening right now is Auburn is staying low, getting leverage, really pounding on Army. So they are winning not just because of the pound difference, but because they're playing good, solid football down low, just like Merrill showed you. From the eye, first and 10, 24 yard line. Little play action. Damian Craig all day to run the football, and he lost his footing at the 25. Damian Craig had a wide open lane rod to the tuck for, for the end zone. Yeah, he might have scored on that one, and he knows it. He slipped down, and when you're on a when you're on a field like this, you can't cut off your inside foot. You don't have enough area, surface area. You have to make sure you cut from your outside. <laughs> that ends the first quarter. Damian Craig take cover. 10-0 Tigers. We'll be back. We start the second quarter with Auburn on top 10 nothing as you look at the Black Knights of Army. So far speed has been killing the Black Knights. Auburn has a whole lot of it especially at the wide receiver position. Tigers in good field position again. Second down 11 as we start the second quarter. Auburn up 5 10. Damian Craig from the shotgun two backs. Craig this time says I'm going to try this again. And tucks and runs and slides to the 22-yard line. Downstairs in Merrill Hodge. Well, uh, Craig, you saw Damian Craig, right? Well, you're looking at a pack 75. Every time a uh, quarter ends or a score, this thing's going to go off. Now, I'm telling you this. This is the kind of thing you want to take hunting with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see Damian Craig. He didn't know what to hit it. Oh, no. That's the most pressure he's felt all day. <laughs> Very good. Now, Merrill likes to hunt those birds. I don't know. Craig's numbers, 9 of 15, 152 yards, and already 45 yards on the ground. Again from the shotgun, Craig feels pressure. Ducks trouble. Still buying some time, goes the other way. Wide open, Robert Baker to the 11-yard line. Oh, 
Well, Craig, as long as Damian Craig can sit back there and pick his teeth, he's going to have the time of his life. Look at this. You're going to see the offensive line give him a lot of time. Only four men rushing for Army. Well, finally, Craig says, I'm tired of this. I'm going to move outside, see if I can see somebody. You cannot in the secondary cover guys for five seconds. And that's about as long as Army had back there to cover. Can't do it. First down, 10 at the 11-yard line. Eye formation. Craig under center. Tigers knocking on the door. The pitch play. Rusty Williams. And the Black Knights do not bend. They knock him down at the 12-yard line. And the tackle by Kotwika. Kotwika is certainly a guy who can make plays in the middle of the field. You know, he's a great story. 5'11", 211 pounds. He's a team captain for Army. He's got the strong safety size, Rod, but you know what? Leader. And again, Merrill talked about leverage. He's a success at the, at the inside linebacker. Well, he's already down low. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't it's have to much. He gets up there and makes the hits, yeah. Second down 10 from the 11. Damian Craig rolls out, fires the other way, and contact made, but the catch pulled down by the tight end, Jesse McCovery and Garland Gay. There's a bit of a size differential there. Gay at 187, McCovery 255. But look what's going on up front. Estes, number 72, is the best defensive lineman for Army. He gets nowhere near the quarterback. He's their sack leader with six. They have kept him out of the backfield, and that is a chief reason why Damian Craig is having a huge first half. Yeah, they call him their big-time pass rush threat and so far has been unable to find Damian Craig. From the shotgun, third down, six from the seventh. Craig throws, fires, touchdown. Touchdown, Willie Gaucher. Willie Gaucher, touchdown. Well, Gaucher did a nice job getting outside, and this time you will find that Army just lost some of the receivers. They were playing a little bit of a zone out there. Now watch as he Gaucher goes to the outside. Inside coverage that time by Augusta 34. He just doesn't realize how far away Gaucher has gotten from him. And you've got to have better presence and awareness in the secondary. You can't let a guy be that wide open in the end zone when you're playing a zone. Second touchdown of the season for Gaucher and the second thrown today by Damian Craig. The extra point is up and true and Auburn with a 17 nothing lead on Army will come back to Shreveport after this. Here's the scoring drive you see what they did there Gosha with a seven yard touchdown reception Craig three out of three on that drive. You know I'm happy we have ESPN two back where I live now starting January 1st we had a campaign we got it. You got it got it starting tomorrow. Yeah. You see you call your cable operator and look what happened. Army. Well, right now, if you're Army, you kind of wonder about what is Sutton thinking? Is he going to stay with his offense? Is he going to open it up a little bit? I believe he is going to stick with the option game, maybe some power running, and I think that's the right thing to do. The worst thing to do would be to panic right now. Second and five. Hand off to Brizik. Seldom used halfback. He's more of a blocking back, but still averages over four and a half yards a carry out of El Toro, California. Well, you're right. He only carried the ball 71 times coming into the ball game here. They really don't feature him in the running game, but they're trying to get something going. They've got a big third down now, third and two. They're just going to try and pick this up. I believe they'll keep it on the ground here, Craig. Third down and two. The fullback is Joe Hewitt. Keeper, Makeda, first down and two yards more. Brad Ware made the tackle. Well, one of the things that Greg uh, Gregory, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday is that Makeda is so big that he can fall forward for a yard or two. There's Gregory right there. And he says he'll give Makeda the chance to run the ball in short yards because he's 6'3 and he'll fall forward and pick up a first down. He just never ever gets knocked back. Double tight. Tight information for Army. First and 10 from the 33. Play action. Makeda chasing behind. Throws on the run over the arms of his tight end, Chris Dunning. Pass intended for number 87. 
You know, we have seen the speed for Auburn on offense, but they have some speed on defense, too. Watch the pressure that is put on Makeda here. He's going to find himself rolling. Now, look at these great big linemen coming with good speed. That time, it looks like it's going to be number 93, Millard, coming around with good speed. They've got it throughout that team. Makeda not known to throw the football. That was only his 88th attempt on the season. Ball's incomplete. Second down, 10 from the 32. And some contact up front. The big fellas on the move. 69. That's Jeremy Chapman. And looks like uh, Chapman just a little bit quick off the snap. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Oh, Army is certainly sputtering here in the first half. And I think what you're going to find is that Makeda is going to grab this team by the throat just as he did against Navy, take it in his own hands to try to make something happen to get back in the ball game. Penalty pushes Army back to the 27-yard line, second down and 15. Again, the play action, Makeda stands in that pocket. The ball up for grabs, incomplete. Nearly picked off, not once, but twice. Yeah, not a good decision that time, and that's surprising. Makeda usually does not throw into traffic, and I think right now he's pressing a little bit. Remember we talked about him trying to make something happen? Well, that's what he does here. He doesn't have a guy open, but nevertheless, he throws the ball directly into coverage. Through the hands of Spikes, the inside linebacker. He's lucky Spikes didn't pick it off. Stops the clock with 10.29 to play in the half. Auburn by 17. Makeda steps up and throws incomplete and climbing the ladder was Ron Thomas. Rodney Creighton, the left corner, right there on him. Well, that's where the option offense really hurts you. When you're in third and long, it's very difficult to pick up the first down because you just don't practice throwing the ball that much and you don't have the skills to do it that well, such as we've seen by Auburn today. Jeff Lord the kick. Takes a hop at the 41, picked up Robert Baker. Baker tries to take it near side, and now I'm counting one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six yellow hankies are out. The laundromat is open. Oh. Forty-yard kick, a one-yard return, and well, there's one of them. There are two right there. On the return team, illegal block in the back. Penalty be 10 yards from the other run. First down. There's a timeout with 10-11 to play in the first half. Auburn on top of Army by 17. Easy to find a clip. Watch 54 Haven Fields. He's in the circle right there. You're going to see him just run down and commit the foul right now. Blocking the black back. Very very apparent. Nothing fancy about that. Nothing fancy. So the Tigers will start at their own 24-yard line, first and 10. They lead by 17. And the Tigers, Rod, they have averaged 10 yards on first down. Well, they've been throwing the ball on first down very effectively. From the eye, Rusty Williams, the pitch. I'm going to call him down. Back at the 22-yard line. Call up the 21. Well, Auburn has to be happy with what they've done defensively. They have used their speed to really negate the option right now. And now they're concerned about Army throwing the ball. You see them making their adjustments, reading the, the routes and the coverages they'll use to handle them. There's Terry Bowden for you. In his fourth season, 35 wins, nine defeats. One tie of 17 here early, 9.30 to play in the half. Great play action. Damian Craig shows you some arm strength, goes far sideline, and it's taken down by Robert Baker. 
He beat Tom Mullins along the far sideline. Let's take you downstairs and check in with Merrill Hodge. Hey, Craig, Craig and Rodney, I was behind the Army bench and the defense when they came off the field. And guys, I was shocked. There's not a lot of enthusiasm. And as I looked into the guys' faces, they have plainly shocked. And there was a few adjustments, but there's not a lot of enthusiasm. Not what I expected when I walked back there. You know, they're having a bit of a flashback to the Syracuse game because that's the way that game started. And they felt they could compete with this team and that it wouldn't happen like it did against Syracuse. But right now, it's deja vu. Very confident team, though, Army, when we talked to them yesterday. Pitch play, tough hit. Fred Beasley took it. And Stephen King dished it out, his second tackle of the afternoon. They may have to bring the sticks out to measure this one. That Stephen King? Well, the other Stephen King. <laughs> you want to see a bit of a nightmare? Watch Stephen King deliver a blow right here as he comes across. Bang. They make that into a movie. Yeah. Horror story for some of the guys <laughs> on Auburn. Inside linebacker wears 60, 6 1, 230 out of Austin, Texas, a two year letterman. First down from the 35. And again, that middle's getting kind of tough to run through. Well, I don't expect Auburn to be able to run the football. I, I just don't see how that's going to happen. Tyquinko was the man who came up and made the tackle that time. Army now runs the defense that Arizona made popular a couple years ago, that desert swarm where they have five defensive linemen and they really put pressure on the linemen and the backs. They really try and take away the running game. As a matter of fact, Army went out to Arizona and learned how to implement the defense here. Actually, you always have one player that you can't get to. you got kind of a roaming linebacker out there in a bubble. Off the right side again, Fred Beasley. Running behind Thomas and Rowe. Ted Beasley, a great, great high school player at Robert E. Lee High School out of Montgomery, Alabama. Roddy scored 62 touchdowns in his high school career. You know, you were talking about that bubble. Yeah. Well, 72 Estes was the guy who was flexed back, and he was the one that it was hard to get to, and he actually came around and helped make that play. You were absolutely right about that defense being tough to block certain guys. 7-10 and counting. First half, 17-0 Auburn. Third down, eight. Four wide receivers set for the Tigers. Craig up top, wide open. Did he get his foot down? Oh, they're going to give it to him at the 45. Wow. Uh, I, I don't know. It looked from here like he was out of bounds, but, you know, we are a long ways away. Willie Gosset. And I, I tell you, we got to see this again because he did some fancy footwork to keep a to keep a toe in. Yeah, don't watch the front foot. Watch the back foot. Well, he... Oh, he did drag that foot. That's pretty nice. The left leg he kept up high, and he dragged the right one. That was a nice little pose there. 17-yard pass play. Looked like a little Heisman, you know? Yeah. Cool. First and 10 from the 46. I formation. Boy, play action buys Craig plenty of time. Goes for the post pattern incomplete. He was looking downfield to Tyrone Goodson. Covered by Augustus. A flag is down in the Auburn, Auburn backfield. I think they're going to flag them for holding. But what about the job that Damian Craig has done so far today? Look at that comparison. He's already thrown for 205 yards, completed 14 out of 20, two touchdowns. On the other side, Ronnie Makeda has had a tough day so far, has not completed a pass, and really hasn't been very effective at all for Army. Now those numbers speak volumes as you take a look at the other side of the football field, Ronnie Makeda. Makeda, no yards passing, but 16 yards rushing. Well, really, what, our, what Army needs right now is to make a play defensively to give their team a certain lift. They haven't had anything really positive happen, so they need to make a play to try to get something happening here before the half. Under seven minutes to go. Second down, 25 again. Play action. Heavy rush by Army. And it forces a quick throw 
by Damian Craig. Tyrone Goodson tried to come back and nearly made the catch at the 47-yard line. Well, but they got another hit on Damian Craig. Look at that helmet. Yeah. And he, you know, the mud, now you see the mud on him. That's showing you that they're bringing more pressure and getting to him. They're a little bit afraid of that because it means man coverage, but now they're bringing, instead of four, five guys. See what happens here? They get pressure on him. They get another hit on him. Each and every time they hit him, that's to their advantage. Second down, 20, call that third down and 25. Now a timeout. Craig calls timeout, so Terry Bowden wants to talk about it. 6.46 until halftime. We'll be back. What is this? This is our new theme music. I like it. Hey, George. Hey, Carl. Okay. What are you guys doing? We just did. Mind if I join you? Go. There's number 55, one of Auburn's fine linebackers, Takeo Spikes. I call him Mr. Spikes. Yeah, he can run, can't he? Oh. He is fast. Five wide receivers for the Tigers, third down 25. On the shotgun, good protection over the middle, complete. Boy, the go-to guy in this first half has been Willie Gaucher. Add another reception to his total. You know, I don't get this. You know, Army is bringing four guys against nobody in the backfield. They have no running backs to help protect. Five guys out on receive on routes. You can't put pressure on the quarterback like that. I understand Army is afraid of the man-to-man -man coverage back there, but you can't let that quarterback sit back there and pick you apart. Now we talked to the defensive coordinators. They said, hey, if we see it, we'll bring it. They don't like to blitz, though. They're not a blitzing defense, but if they get the opportunity, they said they would send a backer. Well, they said they would send five pretty much all the time, but they were sending four against five linemen and five receivers out on routes. You just can't win a matchup like that. Well, the officials have, have huddled at the 37. Our referee today is Jim Fogeltance. Well, how about the job? Terry Bowden is doing offensively. He's calling the plays for his team today. His brother was named the head coach at Tulane. And so now there are three Bowdens who are head coaches in uh, Division I college football. Division I-A, I should say. Keep in mind, there are only four African-American head coaches, so there are almost as many Bowden coaches as African-American head coaches, and there are 111. You look at the Tigers' possessions. They start at their 26, nine plays. They get the field goal, then the touchdown. They fumble, then a touchdown on their fourth possession. And right now, they start at their own 24. And this one is, this will be the ninth play of the drive. Kind of drive you expect from Army. Yeah. Third down, call it a yard. This time, Army showing blitz. They come up and shoestring tackle. Damian Craig, Katwika, number 44, made the shoestring tackle, but a first down for the Tigers. Now, let's see. I don't know if they got a good spot or not. Well, even if they didn't get it, I presume that that man will go for it on fourth down. And they've been moving the ball pretty well, and you're inside Army territory. You might as well go for it on fourth down if you haven't picked it up already. Well, originally the official spotted that football at the 35. Now it's back around the 36, so they're going to bring the chains out. I think they're going to be short. Yeah, I think you may be right, but I think you go for it. Yeah, they're very short. Short by at least a football's length. So that brings up fourth down, less than a yard. <laughs> Terry Bowden will make the decision. Coached at Salem College, Sanford. His 13-year record 
99, 45 and 2. It's a big game for Terry Bowden. Some pressure's been on him. Lost their last two regular season games. Looking for his 100th career win from the eye. Fourth and short. Beasley spins. First down, Auburn. At the 32. Once again, up front, Auburn doing a great job offensively. Their line really firing out, opening up the hole, making it easy for Beasley to pick up the first down. And remember what Merrill talked about, leverage getting underneath? Well, how about the job that number 68 Victor Riley did? He got his pads underneath and just crushed his man. Big hole there. You know, Craig, you were talking about Terry Bowden being under some pressure this year. Remember, he started 11-0 at Auburn. In fact, 20-0 before he lost his first ball game. Had a lot of, of course, uh, Pat Dye's kids. It's a very young team. 11th play of this drive. Big opener. Rusty Williams. Picks up eight, maybe nine to the 23-yard line. Now he has a young team. Remember, when he took over the program at Auburn, you see the record 11-0 and then 9-1-1 in 94. He did have some guys from Pat Dye's era, but also Auburn was on probation. He had a tough time recruiting. So now he has numbers that are down, not a lot of seniors. So they've struggled in close ball games this year. Yeah, close games indeed. Especially those last two, two games of the season. Flags are down before the snap. On the defense, penalty making a first down. Oh, the penalty, automatic first down. And yeah, we talked about the close games. You take a look at LSU, that was a four point loss. Florida knocked out by, what, 41. And then look at the last two games round of the season 56 49, Georgia, four overtimes, and then Alabama by one. Yeah, you win two of those three ball games. No one's complaining. Yeah. A first down from the 18 yard line, I formation, the pitch play. Rusty Williams and nice tackle in the backfield big number 93. That's Mike Corper who came in to make that play and he is actually in for Larry Angles number 76. Corper does not get that many snaps but he he was the right man at the right place that time. And Auburn needed a play. They are in danger of I mean the Army needed a play. They're in danger of having Auburn put another score up. And you know Merrill told you that if they were hanging their heads before another score now those heads might go a lot lower. Under four minutes to play in the half. Second down 14. Craig the five step drop fires a dart to the far side and the catch is made. Nope, incomplete. Karsten Bailey had to really try to dig it out of the turf. Karsten Bailey, the sophomore from Sharpsburg, Georgia. Yeah, you see him point to himself. He said, you know, my bad. I was there. I should have had it. Just dropped it. Throw it to me again. Yeah. Now, he, he wants to get in on the fun because everybody else is running down the field, catching touchdown passes, and he hasn't had one yet. Uh, Tyrone Goodson's been in on some uh, big plays from Damian Craig. During the season, Karsten Bailey was Damian Craig's favorite Wide receiver with 45 receptions. 14th play of this drive. Five wide receivers set. Third down, 14. Army sending the blitz. Oh, they sent. Cut weak of 44 came in untouched the inside linebacker. Well remember we talked earlier about nobody in the backfield and how they were not putting the pressure on. Well now they come with the pressure. There you see Denny Dornboss the defensive coordinator who's finally gone with it. And again Craig is down. That's another hit on him. This time he's on the field not getting up. And obviously nobody wants to see Damian Craig get hurt. He's grabbing his neck there, but certainly Army understands that in order to have a chance to win the ball game, they have to put pressure on the quarterback. They have to hit him. Well, they took a chance deep inside their own territory and came after Craig with with Katwika. Well, anytime you put your quarterback in the backfield, and you don't have running backs to protect him. You expose him to these kinds of hits. Two guys coming in cleanly, getting shots on him. That time it was Stephen King, number 60, who got the big hit on him. And you saw Craig went right down. 
Well, that, well that it's into Damian Craig. We'll step aside. We'll keep you updated. 3.29 to play in the half. Well, a marvelous performance by Damian Craig in this football game, and he's been down since we've been away, and now you see him for the first time roll over on his back and now begins to set up, and oh, that's, that is... That is relief for, yeah. for Tiger fans. Yeah, more than just Tiger fans. That's a relief for everyone who appreciates competition. You don't want to see anybody hurt like that. And to see him walk off the field is tremendous after the shot he took. Takes the helmet off. Yeah, he took a glancing blow. It was a second man through Stephen King. Yeah, watch number 60 coming into the screen from your left. You'll see him show up right now. Here's the blow he delivers. And you see how Damian Craig's head was down, and he took that blow right on the left, the right side of his head and immediately grabbed his helmet in pain. They continue to take a look at Damian Craig. John Cooley is Craig's backup, a senior out of Sarasota. This will be a 49-yard field goal attempt by Jared Holmes. Good snap, a line drive kick is up and through. So from 49 yards, Jared Holmes builds that Tiger lead to 20. 3.15 to play in the half as they continue to look at Craig. 3.15 to play opening half in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. Auburn Tigers on top of Army by 20. There's a guy with a pretty good leg in my book. Jared Holmes just kicked one from 49. Yeah, he's got a leg on him. I'm huh? pretty good kicker. Ron Thomas for Army at his own goal line. Jared Holmes has it teed up. Line drive kick. Ron Thomas at the goal line. Thomas at the 20. Thomas at the 25. And on second effort, bangs down to the 28-yard line. Let's go downstairs in Merrill Hodge. Yeah. Well, thanks, Craig. I'm with the special guest, Lieutenant General Dan Christman. A general is a, char a superintendent of the academy. And General, they've had a great success this year. What has that done for the academy? It's brought the spirits up to an absolute peak. You can hear that in the background with the cadet right now. But I think it's also focused the interest and the attention of America on a lot of what's going on extremely well across the board in all the service academies, not just sports, but academics and military. Now, one thing about these men, I know that they never give up. I know they're down 20 points right now, but you don't expect them to give up. No service academy football team never gives up. We'll be back. Well, thanks, sir. Let's go back to the top, guys. Thank you, Merrill. Three-star general. Yeah, they, they know how to say it. How about what George C. Marshall, the chief of staff for the Army, said in World War II, I want an officer for a secret and dangerous mission. I want a West Point football player. <laughs> yeah. So I get down two. On the option. Down to the sideline, big gainer. Jeff Brizick took the pitch from Makeda. Well, this is a two-minute option. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they've got three minutes, uh, actually 229 now to get a score. And when they do that, they don't throw the ball. They go to the wide option. You know, they pitch the ball, counter option. First down, Army. First down for the Black Knights at the 44-yard line. Bob Sutton pacing the sideline in his sixth year. They ride the fullback, Joe Hewitt. Jimmy Brumbaugh made the tackle tomorrow. Be sure to tune in to ABC Sports for the granddaddy of them all. The Rose Bowl, number two, Arizona State battles fourth-ranked Ohio State, New Year's Day, 4.30 Eastern on ABC Sports. Yeah. I love seeing granddaddy of yeah. them all. <laughs> How good is that one going to be? Yeah. You got Jake Plummer, you know, you got uh, Orlando Poole, Pace, Pace over there. Ron Springs at corner. Some great matchups in that ball game. Second down eight. Makeda going up top. Got a man. The catch is pulled down. Bobby Williams, the left halfback, and the Black Knights with their best field position at the 22. Well, the thing about the option is that it will lull you to sleep. And that time they picked on one of the defensive backs for Auburn, number 25, Martavius Houston. He got lulled into sleep because he's been up tackling the option up close. He forgets to pick up his man. He runs way down the field. Bobby Williams picks it up, 
Auburn's an army is in business. Only his fourth reception of the season, a 33-yard pickup to the 21-yard line. Makeda, the quarterback keeper at the five to the three. Big drive by the Black Knights as we head down to halftime of 1.30 left on the clock. Well, when a general tells you to come back, you come back. Look at the hole to the left side. Easily to run through that. Great blocking again by Doug Chadwick and Dave Beard opening up that hole over there. And Makata got right in behind it. 18-yard gain. First and goal from the three-yard line. You at the fullback. The handoff. And into the end zone, Bobby Williams. Was it just a coincidence we had a three-star general telling them to come back, and now they're right back? Ninth rushing touchdown for Bobby Williams, a 190-pound sophomore from Kingston, North Carolina. And Williams was the man. The big play was the catch he made over Marcavius Houston to set up the touchdown. Extra point, Joseph Parker has yet to miss one this season, 40 of 40. And make it 41 of 41. So the drought is over for Army. Auburn now, their lead whittled down to 20 to 7. Pretty impressive drive. Nice pass and run mix. Yeah, watch the blocking there. Good blocking by the tight end, number 84, Ron Lashinsky. We told about how Lashinsky is such a good blocker. Great effort that time. That opened up the hole for Williams to get in for that score. Nice second effort on the play as well. Rodney Creighton at 158 pounds, the right corner, trying to take on Bobby Williams, but Williams able to plow in for the first touchdown of this game here for Army. Well, 84 Lashinsky is such a good blocker. I mean, he weighs about 240 pounds as a tight end, and that's why he's a prospect. He can block like that, and he can catch the ball. Well, Rod, psychologically, as you go into halftime with 115, this that drive, that huge. drive, huge. You can't, you can't even probably put it on the map. Uh, huge, absolutely huge for that team. You don't see any guys hanging their heads right now. Let's go downstairs and update you on Damian Craig, Merrill. Hey, Craig and Rod, and you talk to the team doctor. Damian Craig has a bruised neck, but he will be back playing. Back to you guys. So Auburn will get their quarterback back. They'll get a chance. Have to wonder, let's see if he comes in on this series before half. I would certainly keep him out until the second half with a minute and 15 to go here. Eric Olson kicks it away. Takes a hop at the 18. And a nice return by Eric Hines Tucker to the 33-yard line. Let's check in with Chris Fowler, who's in New Orleans. Hey, Chris. Hey guys, that's why I come up on our New Dodge Halftime Report, the final 48 hours of preparation for the Nokia Sugar Bowl. We'll also check in in Pasadena for the Rose Report on the eve of the granddaddy of them all. And at Stallings Last Sand, we'll preview the Outback Bowl, Crimson Tide against Michigan, plus Tommy Bowden, the new Tulane coach, will join us. Guy knows Auburn very well. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, the Bowden, the Bowden's all over the yeah, place. Yeah, everywhere. But you know, they don't seem to miss uh, Tommy too much today. They're moving pretty efficiently on offense. Damian Craig has returned. Final minute here of the first half, and he comes out throwing. He hooks up and complete. Willie yes, Gaucher has been the man in this first half. A senior out of Fort Walton, Florida. First out of bounds. Only 18 catches on the season. Yeah, he's been the man. He's he's a guy that knows how to run, too. I mean, once he gets the ball, he can do something with it. But, you know, all those Auburn guys are like that. I mean, they run with the ball after the catch. Willie Gaucher today with already in his first half seven catches for 108 yards. First and ten from the 49. They set up the screen as the heavy pressure from Army. Mark Keith. Cooper scoots out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Yeah, nice one-handed catch. As you see, the clock is at 52 seconds. Good decision by Cooper to get out of bounds. He could have turned that thing up the field, but he realized he wouldn't get much yardage, and it was better to, pres to preserve the clock. 
Markeith Cooper, only 156 pounds, a true freshman out of Miami. Damian Craig rolls and throws, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Robert Baker. So you talked about 17 Cooper being a small guy, only 156 pounds. Ahead of time, he went out and helped his quarterback with a big block on number 72, C.W. Estes. And Estes is 260 pounds. But old number 17 didn't seem to have much of a problem sticking his nose in there. High school All-American. Ran for almost 4,000 yards, 35 touchdowns. And 1,800 yards his senior year. Yeah. Third down and four. Shotgun, Damian Craig. Look at the protection. The bubble pops. Craig's going to tuck and run and runs out of bounds at the 36. That stops the clock with 37 seconds Damian left in the half. Coming up on the new Dodge halftime report. Stick around. Cowboys in the news. Some interesting developments today. Chris Fowler and company, of course, in New Orleans. And Tommy Bowden will join us at halftime on the new Dodge halftime report. First and 10 from the 36. Auburn with a 20 to 7 lead, trying to stack on a few more before halftime. Damian Craig airs it deep. Robert Baker makes the catch down inside the 15 to the 12 yard line. Well, oh, Craig, it's just speed right now, and Army really doesn't have enough of it. That ball was in the air a long time. Army was playing a two deep coverage. The safety should be able to make this play. Look how long this ball is in the air. He throws it very high, but you can't see anyone getting over there for Army to make the play. Just not enough speed in the secondary. Garland Gay made the tackle a 27 yard pass reception. Damian Craig again throws, fires, fumble. But it looked like he signaled it was an incomplete pass over there, but it looked to me like that ball was clearly caught. Uh, Karsten Bailey made the reception, but he took a hard pop. The ball came out. Yeah, who had possession when it came out? If he if he caught the ball and then it was knocked out and went out of bounds, it's still, it's still Auburn's ball. But if he never had possession, it'd be an incomplete pass. Here's Jim Fogeltance. The pass was ruled complete. Fumbled forward and out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the spot of the fumble. So that spot is at the four yard line. Well, yeah, you can't fumble it forward and uh, have someone else recover it. It's, it's the old, you know, Oakland Raider rule from years ago when Dave Casper fumbled the ball forward and went and recovered it in the end zone. To score a touchdown, and now the NCAA is the NFL doesn't allow a player to for, to fumble forward and recover it in the end zone. So you go back and you put it where he fumbled. Well, hold on. And now what's going on? Army comes off the field. On in the end zone, by rule, it'll be Army's ball at the spot of the fumble first down. Now. Uh, yeah, look, he fumbled, they're saying he fumbled it out of the end zone. If he fumbled it out of the end zone, okay, it's a touchback. It does Let's, hit the pylon. Okay, take a look. Watch the ball at the end after Bailey gets hit and the ball comes out. Does it go out of bounds before it hits the pylon or not? It does hit the pylon. Okay. Good call. All right, yeah. It took a while to sort it out, but that's correct. Right, because initially the official was ruling that it didn't hit the pylon, that it went out of bounds, and he couldn't give him the ball on the one-yard line. Final play here of the half. What an ending to this, uh, the first half here at the Independence Bowl. Ronnie Makeda takes an E. And we count down the final seconds, 6 5. And Good. so Bob Sutton of Army, Rod, will go into the halftime down by 13. Let's take you to New Orleans. Chris Fowler standing by for Hammond, lead over Army. You know, and, and Rod, we knew that Damian Craig. Uh, could throw the football and run the football. He did a great combination of the two. Let's take a look at some first half numbers. 356 total yards for the Auburn Tigers, 111 for Army. Yeah, and that's the key. Look at that 111 right there. 
for Army. Their game plan was to control the football. Heck, they haven't even been on the field enough to control the football. They got to do a better job of that in the second half. And you see the passing yardage there, 284 yards for Auburn. That's Damian Craig. Army will have the football to start the third quarter. The kick bounces into the end zone touchback, so the Black Knights will start at their own 20-yard line. And, Rod, no question, we talked to some Army people during halftime. This is a big, big possession to start this third quarter. They have some momentum as they went into halftime with the touchdown to make it 20-7. to Yeah, big possession, big drive for that man right there, Ronnie Makeda. And you know that Sutton is thinking that he's got to have a drive to start the second half to get his team back into it. They're not too far away, Craig. We start the third quarter. Army from their own 20-yard line from this direction. And Bobby Williams wrapped up after a three-yard gain by Takeo Spikes, his fifth tackle of this game. A pickup of three to the 25-yard line. Count by Makeda and the handoff. Not much for Bobby Williams. Well, you know what Ronnie Makeda does as a quarterback, and particularly an option quarterback, he always looks to run the ball where there are five or fewer Auburn Tigers. And that is the, the basis of the option. You count numbers, and you run where you count the fewest number of defenders. You just draw a line down the middle of the field. You find the five or the four, and you run it over there. Third down and four. They start right and cut it back up the middle. Demetrius Perry, the ball carrier. Well, you know that the Army running game has not been doing much. They, I believe, really miss Joe Hewitt. His 839 yards really count, and they haven't been able to break anything today, and he's the kind of player that can do that for them. He would only carry the ball one time in the first half for one yard, so three up and three down. Army forced to punt. Scott Lord, Robert Baker, and he is slammed down inside the 45 or the 44-yard line. Good tackle by Scott Eichelberger. Well, Craig, now the thing to see is what happens to the quarterbacks in the second half. You know, first half, we know that Craig had a great first half. He threw the ball very well. Did a much better job of moving his team than Army did. There you see the comparison, 284 yards for Damian Craig, only 33 for Ronnie Makeda. Look for Army to bring more pressure in the second half, at least five guys. The game turned around when the pressure was applied by, by the Black Knights. Four wide receivers set from the shotgun, first and 10, Auburn from the 45. Well, Damian Craig didn't move a muscle. Still got the ball, swung it out to Carson Bailey, and Bailey to the 42-yard line. You see that? That was about as patient as you'll see a quarterback. He didn't move a muscle, just no. his arm. Just his right arm. No, no leg movement, just his right arm. Well, you know, he's got the time. That time there were five guys coming once again, but he just took his time. And you'll see there's going to be a little bit of action coming that way. You're going to see him really take his time. You see the cross there? There comes King up the middle. They pick up the blitz. First down. So that's showing blitz. Pinching in from the outside, so got Wika incomplete. So there you go. You throw some pressure, and down on his back is Damian Craig. Well, that time they brought it off the corner. It was Kotwika that time, 44, coming off the left side because there was not a back in there to protect Damian Craig. And when they see that, they have now made it an automatic. No backs, you blitz. Damian Craig showing. How much, uh, no signs of that bruised neck that he suffered late in the second quarter. Again, the blitz is on. Got Wigga able to get to Damian Craig, but not before Willie Gaucher got his hands on the football. Yeah, you know, they're bringing the pressure again. The dilemma, though, for Army is they can't play tight coverage in the secondary, so all Craig is doing is dumping the ball off before the blitz gets there. 
Hey, the guys in the Army secondary are afraid to get closer to the receivers because they may run right past them. Third down and six. Again, four wide receivers. Low snap. Craig pumps and fires over the middle. Incomplete. Tyrone Goodson stretching out down inside the 20-yard line. That stops the clock with 12.17 to play third quarter. Well, he had him over the middle, and Goodson ran the route, and he was open, and he probably should have come up with that ball. It was a little bit high, but it hit his hands, and anytime you get your hands on the ball as a receiver, you've got to make the catch. First punt today for Auburn. Jared Holmes will handle the duties, averages 42 yards a kick, his longest 60. This is going to have to be a, what, do you, what you call a poocher. He's up. High, high kick. And it bounces two yards deep. So Army will have it. We come back at their own 20. 12.09 to play third quarter. Back to Shreveport after this. You're watching the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl from Shreveport, Louisiana, between Auburn and 24th-ranked Army. Because of time constraints, we now move ahead to further coverage. Third quarter, 10-19 to go. Auburn up top of Army, 20-7. to The lights have been on, Rod, uh, since the start. A lot of fog around the south. Yeah, it's, it's been rainy and kind of dark and all that kind of stuff. Perfect football weather, huh? <laughs> you bet. <laughs> From the eye. Damian Craig throws near side. Ron Thomas. Check that. Willie Gauthier. Well, Gauthier is having a big day, and he was the Tigers' leading receiver last season with 58 catches. Came back this year and wasn't the top receiver. Wasn't even one of the starters initially. You know, Roddy's had to spread it around with Carson Bailey and Tyrone Goodson. Robert Baker. Chains are on their way out to the far sideline. From the far sideline to the near sideline. And the stretch. First down, Auburn at the 38. Oh, let's see if Auburn keeps in someone to help protect Craig as they throw the football. They threw the quick route that time. Now they're back in their eye formation where they tend to pound the football with the toss sweep play, Craig. Kevin McLeod, Rusty Williams are two back. Rusty Williams. Five yards to the 34-yard lines. Let's check in with Merrill Hodge. Merrill. Thanks, Craig. You know, the Spirit of Independence Award was awarded its first time in 1977 to General Omar N. Bradley, who was, at the time was the only living five-star general. In 1914, he was a starter for the Army team as a center. In 1943, was a personal representative to Dwight D. Eisenhower. After 1977, uh, he uh, presented the award all the way up into 81 until he passed away to which they then added his name to the trophy because he stood for everything the award was for, courage, strength, commitment, and uh, patriotism. It's kind of ironic, guys, that uh, this award, I think, fits hand in glove with Army, but this is the first time Army has ever played in the Independence Bowl. Back to you guys. Yeah, well said. Today, that award will be given out. To the Veterans for America. Incomplete pass stops the clock with 9.02 remaining in the third quarter. Another third down, big third down for Army. They can't afford to let Auburn pick up another first down and get a score here. This is what Sutton was talking about. They need to come up on third down with plays to get back in the ball game. Four wide receivers, three to the far side. They're going to go short side of the field and a collision. Karsten Bailey. They threw into triple coverage that time and some big hitting going on. Robert Brown led the way. Yeah, Robert Brown almost picked this ball off. He's going to be in the center of the field. You'll see him as he'll show up. There he is, bottom of your screen to the left. He reads it perfectly. He just doesn't come up with the play. That would have been huge for Army. Perfect read. Good job. Would have been a great job if he'd caught it. 
Robert Brown, a junior out of San Antonio. Fourth down and five, and a interesting call right here by Terry Bowden from the shotgun. Fourth and five from the 33-yard line. Out of trouble, Damian Craig down the sideline. He's going to walk in. Damian Craig, touchdown. You know, that is a guy who is just a tremendous athlete. The blitz was brought from the outside. Kodwika, 44, came in. Craig gave him a juke, and then he went down the sideline. That's just a case of one athlete being better than another. Watch Craig. Here comes the pressure. He just gets around it, and then there's nobody there. Because of the pressure coming, he scampers for 33 yards and a touchdown. Huge fourth down play. Gutty fourth down call. Yeah, got to give Terry Bowden credit for that. Terry Bowden, now he wants a timeout. Well, Craig, he was in an area of the field where he couldn't punt it, and he figured he didn't like the field goal option, so go ahead and go for the first down. So Damian Craig takes the hat off. He wants to talk to his coach. 8.51 to play in the quarter. Well, Bowden and the guys have talked about it. Going to go for two. Damian Craig lobs him to the end zone incomplete. He wanted Tyrone Goodson. So the score will stand 26 to 7. You know, beginning of the game, we talked about Donovan McNabb and how Craig is so similar to him. Well, you've seen McNabb make plays like this, make a guy miss, pressure, and man-to-man -man coverage. Now there's nobody there. This is just a sprint, and you're not going to catch that guy from behind. He is very fast. Well, the Big Ten meets the SEC in the Outback Bowl. 16th ranked Alabama battles 15th ranked Michigan at the Outback Bowl in Tampa. Gene Stallings coaches his last game for the Crimson Tide. That's tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific. Got to get up early on the on the West Coast, right? Oh, yeah. You're from the Bay Area. Oh, but you know, you got to be up. Take a look at the scoring drive again, Craig, the 33-yard run. Again, three passes, two rushes, but got to be up on New Year's Day. The kick to Ron Thomas, and Thomas really hasn't had a lot of opportunity to get to get out of the end zone. That one drops five yards deep. Well, now Army once again is feeling the pressure. They have got to move the football. I really believe, Craig, they're going to have to get something in this third quarter if they're going to have a chance in the fourth quarter to make this thing happen, if they're going to get a chance to win it. And the pressure lies on that young man, Ronnie Makeda. 8.51 to play, third quarter, 26-7, Auburn. Well, the one thing that Auburn's done a good job of is forcing Army to run the fullback dive on first down. They're dictating that. Army's going with it, but the inside guys are playing well. So is that man right there, Damian Craig. He had a huge first half and came back with a nice play in the second half. Three tight end set for Army. They are really packing it in. Second down, eight. Hewitt running on a sore knee. Big opener off the right side. Brad Ware brought him down at the 34-yard line. Well, if you had a question about Hewitt's knee, uh, Rod, <laughs> he, he was moving left and right pretty well. You see why they miss him. And he's a guy that can break a tackle or two and keep drives going and really start to chew up the clock, keep the Auburn offense off the field, and lead towards an Army score. Second carry of the day, a 12-yard pickup and a first down. What a time of possession. Hasn't worked in their favor today. It has all season long, but not today. There's time to run left side. Bobby Williams. Yeah, and I really think right now Army is getting a lift 
from Hewitt being in the ball game. The fact that he's got the bad knee, he comes out there, breaks off a run, and is in there now to help and block. I think the guys are looking around him and saying he's the inspiration. We're, if he's not going to quit, neither are we. Hewitt picked up 12. Bobby Williams comes back with a 13-yard pickup. First and 10 Army at the 48. Inside Auburn territory to the 48-yard line is Hewitt. That man right there in the middle is a pretty good football player. Kyle Scott, center, he's been playing really well. Watch him in the middle of the screen. Look at the double team. He gets right here, good blocking. When he blocks like that, they can run the ball inside behind him. And that's a good block on the nose, moving him out of the way. Hewitt out, limped off, and Demetrius Perry back in. He gets the football and rips off six, seven yards to the 43. Uh, Try to Perry. keep her eye on, excuse me, a Hewitt. Uh, you talked about the emotional lift. That last play, he did hobble off. Yeah, they're going to need him, at least his presence anyway. And Perry almost looked like he dropped that, was going to lose that ball. He's about to come out there. Here you see Hewitt on the sideline. Lee Gibson. Number 31 checks in. So now they're down to their third string fullback. Hopping over a blue jersey is Bobby Williams. Jimmy Brumbaugh, kind of a quiet game, but yet his fifth tackle, number 96 for Auburn. Well, that's a matchup, you know, you and I talked about and we've watched today. Kyle Scott, 55 against Jimmy Brumbaugh, 96. And 96, Brumbaugh has been getting the better of it for most of the ball game. The last series or so, it's been a real good struggle in there, a real good fight. Brumbaugh, a second team all SEC selection, only a sophomore out of Keystone Heights, Florida. Little stumble, but Demetrius Perry able to regather his steps well, there is Hewitt on the sideline you know he was wearing a big brace on that left leg and I think they're checking that now yep they are we saw him at practice the other day and that brace is huge but he was able to run straight ahead with it doesn't really cut very well with that arm Andrew that knee a couple of weeks ago against Navy also had some hamstring problems a lot of times when you when you hurt a knee you'll also hurt the hamstring and He's made an incredible comeback to even suit up in his football game. Misdirection off the left side. Bobby Williams again. Maybe two to the 34. Yeah, now this is really sort of an army drive. They're getting three, four yards. They're chewing up yardage, running the clock. If they can go down and get a score here, even if it takes them the third quarter, they'll be in pretty good shape. Now you see their coordinator. Gregory up there. He's right there in the middle. Greg Gregory. Trying to be patient. Well, ninth play of this drive, Rob. Third down and three. And they continue to attack the front. Brumbaugh again the tackle on Perry. Yeah, I think he picked it up, but even if he's short, I guarantee you Army will go for it here. Well, this is the longest sustained drive of the day for the cadets. It is a fourth down, and Greg Gregory is a real gambler. And he's sending guys, and they're going to go for it here. Sutton is totally in agreement with this. He told us yesterday he said, he'll go for it anywhere on the field. Right now, they need to have the football. They need to score. They have no choice. They have to go for it. Lee Gibson to fullback. And to the 30-yard line is Jeff Brizick. An army will have a fresh set of downs. Nothing fancy about that. I mean, that is just man on man blocking tough football. Do you want the first down or not? Greg Gregory likes it. Watch the block in here. Man on man, 55 once again. Kyle Scott, good blocking. And then Brisnick just lowers his shoulder, gets in there. Well, he was able to read the block as well. Yeah. Not much off the right side, but. I Cut it back inside up the middle. I wasn't sure about the spot, but I thought he had picked it up, and they're going to measure this now. But I thought he had clearly picked it up. And he does by a half a football. So a first down at the 30-yard line. Bob Sutton. 
If Army can take this thing in here, Craig, you will see not only the Army sideline, but the cadets come to life here. A cannon's going to go off, too. Yeah. <laughs> First and 10 from the 30 of Auburn. And that time, the, the ground jumped up and took down Demetrius Perry. Let's check in with Merrill Hodge. Hey, Craig and Rodney, uh, Joy, Joy Hewitt came over to the sideline. The doctors took his brace off, checked his knee, and then gave him a boxer's, you're done. So don't expect him to come back, the braces off. Guys are coming over to console him, but he won't be back in the game. Uh, you have the, the ice, it looks like, uh, packed on top of that left knee. And his season is over, but his career is not. He is only a sophomore. Second out, 10 from the 30. For that time, Makeda rode Demetrius Perry for a long time. You are absolutely right. <laughs> I mean, he put that ball in there, and then he took it out. He was waiting a long time for this. Watch the quarterback and the fullback. Look how long that football is in there. He finally decides, I'll let you have it. Perry looked back and said, okay, yeah, I guess it's mine. And I looked at the reaction of Makeda. He was disappointed. He wanted to take it back out because the open, the, the outside opened up for him. Yeah, Perry took it. Current drive, 12 plays. And they chewed five and a half minutes off the clock. Nice shoestring tackle. Was that 95? Yeah, that's Leonard Carson. Carson. Carson did a great job. He was actually being blocked. You can be blocked from time to time, but you still have to make plays. Get off the block and make something happen. Carson did that time. You know, Carson played, I can't believe this, but he played quarterback as a junior in high school. Uh, sure, he's put on some weight. He's 6'2", 273, but he's had a great year. Yeah. He can play that defensive yeah. end spot. Big quarterback back at Shaw High School in Mobile, <laughs> Alabama, huh? He, he could look over the line. <laughs> 240 to go, third quarter. We'll come back to Shreveport after this. The Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl, 240 to play third quarter. Army looking at, again, Rod, a fourth down and three a from big, the 23. Big fourth down. They need this here. And they may go to their big man, too, their big tight end, Lashinsky. Also Dunning in the lineup. The motion man is Grizzik up top, going for the home run ball. Contact in the end zone, incomplete. No flags anywhere. Army looking for the flags. They were trying to get to Chris Dunning, one of their tight ends. Surprising that they would try to go deep down the field. I thought they would try to get the first down with Lashinsky, but it was really Dunning that they went after. Two tight ends to the right side. Dunning goes down deep, not fooled at all. Auburn back in good coverage. Look at the play that Creighton, number 10, makes out there. And again, a young player, a freshman, stepping up to make a good play for Auburn. And Makeda has just not been able to make the big plays when his team has needed it this afternoon. So they turn the ball over on downs. Auburn with a 26-7 lead will start up at the 23. Daniel Craig play action. Sidesteps trouble. Goes down the middle. Wide open. And what a catch by Baker. Baker. 49 yards. Yeah, there was pressure. Look at the blocking here. You're going to see this quarterback, Craig, have plenty of time, even with pressure from the outside, and he's going to find the route down the middle. Good pocket protection. Look at him buy time now. Steps up. He's got his man in the middle. He's wide open there. Robert Baker had the ball been right on the money. He would still be running. But what a great catch by Baker, who had to lay out here and pick it up. First and 10 at the Army 28-yard line. Damian Craig over the middle again, and they're hit incomplete. Tyrone Goodson took a pop at the five-yard line. Hard hit. Robert Brown said hello. Yeah, and that's the way you play deep safety football. You can't let guys run down the middle and catch the ball on you. Auburn's been doing it all day. Finally, Brown says enough of this. Watch 18 show up now with a big hit and makes separation. Guys will catch the football, Craig, but every now and then you got to knock it out of there. And Brown knocked that one away from Goodson. And Goodson's still down. You know, as a wide receiver, Rodney, you play defensive back yourself. You know, you know you come across the middle 
the train is going to hit you once in a while. Yeah, you know, and, and actually Auburn has been taking advantage of the fact that the train has been late most of the day. <laughs> yes. You know, but now Army comes through with a big hit, sending a message saying we've had enough of that. That man sent the message there, Robert Brown. And Goodson looks like he's going to be okay. He's sitting up like that. Probably got the wind knocked out of him. Tyrone Goodson, 88 career receptions before the start of this game. A second team pick in the All Southeast Conference. Watch the hit again here. A big shot, and look at the look at how he just snapped back from that hit. And then he gets another hit once again from someone else coming in. It looks like it was number 16, Tyquinko. So he actually got two hits on the play. You're going to get hit like that. You hope you can hang on to the ball. I don't think the body was made to, to move that way. Let's face it. The body was not meant to play football. football. You're right. <laughs> oh, that's good. Good. Goodson is up. A junior. Brooksville, Florida. That's Central High School. He was a pretty good quarterback out there. Made a name for himself. Everybody talked about him. He was really an outstanding recruit when he came out. Everybody flocked down to Brooksville to try to recruit him. You know, Rod, it's amazing when, you, when you're around college football and you, you'll read players' bios, how many times the kids recruited to play one position, yeah. but yet a year or two later, they wind up playing a totally different spot, offense or defense. Rumbling up the middle, Rusty Williams inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. You know, we've talked about the great job Auburn's done up front, but how about Riley? I mean, his pass blocking has been great, but he has just been blowing guys off the line of scrimmage whenever they've run the ball. He's a big man, 321 pounds, first-year starter, but he's played like a veteran today. Victor Riley, a second-team All-SEC. Selection, first and 10, Auburn at the 13-yard line from the eye. Now some movement up front. And a push and a shove, the nose guard to Colin Kearns. Makes the jump. Or was he drawn off? Prior to snap, ball start on the offense, five yard penalty. Drawn off. Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's National Hockey Night on ESPN. Brendan Shanahan leads the Detroit Red Wings against Tony Amati at the Chicago Blackhawks. Check it out. Sunday night on ESPN. Aren't you impressed with how Damian Craig has responded to the injury he had in the first half, knocked around, bruised neck, came back in the second half, and has been just as, as uh, effective in the second half? 23 of 36 rod, 361 yards, two touchdowns, an Independence Bowl record. What a game through the air. Rusty Williams, touchdown Auburn. Well done, Rusty. Well done, Rusty. He, you know, he moved like that train in Starlight Express, Rusty. You know, he just opened up, chewed up there, got that good thing going and made the touchdown, and now Auburn is rolling like a train. Williams, a redshirt freshman, 18 yards for his fifth touchdown of 1996. 104 to play third quarter, and Auburn really pulling away at 32-7, the extra point to come. And Rusty Williams is a guy who almost went to Notre Dame until he took his recruiting visit and found out how cold it was and said, uh-uh, nope, not going to go there. Going to stay in the South. Watch what Rusty Williams does once again on this touchdown run. I formation counter. You see good blocking once again. Offensive line, but he makes the cuts in the middle of the field to get himself open into the end zone. And James Keeger, number 52, the offensive lineman who's the center, did a nice job at the point of attack. Great block. And I'm sure Rusty Williams went over to him and said, hey, thanks, partner. Nice block. Auburn wants to go for two, and now they've had to call a timeout. You know, I think there might have been some confusion because they had the ball back at the two-yard line, then they had to move it back up to the three. We talked about that earlier, that there was a miss, uh, 
I'll let you say the chalk wasn't put down oh, correctly. Old eagle eyes. You yeah, know, right before there. the ball game, there he is. He's right there. See, they have that right there. It's a two-yard line. Well, that's for the NFL. This is college. you got to put that line right there. And Damian Craig, he was upset because they had the ball at the three. He goes, no, there's, there's the chalk, yeah. chalk line. Yeah, he was wrong. But our guy was on the spot. Merrill Hodge was out there inspecting everything before the game. Brought it to folks' attention and also found out that the goalposts were was, a little crooked. What, leaning about a foot to the right, was it? <laughs> I guess he had his tape measure with him and everything. Is that why he was such a great running back with the Steelers? Well, he, he ran sideways anyway. So, I mean, he, that looks normal to Merrill. <laughs> you know? That's, that's Merrill Hodge. That's his perspective. But it is. It does lean. Actually, it's leaning to the left. Yeah. <laughs> he ran sideways, huh? <laughs> He's not buying you dinner. Tonight. No, he's not. I'll tell you. Attendance today, good crowd here in Shreveport. 41,366 on hand to watch the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl. Two point try for Auburn. Four wide receivers. Craig had his man. That's a second time. Karsten Bailey was. All by his lonesome on the back line of the end zone. Yeah, well, on the last two-point conversion, he had his man wide open in the back of the field. And he just didn't get it there. He's had trouble dropping that one in. But that's about the only thing he hasn't done well today. And Damian Craig has been on top of everything else. And Sutton is absolutely living with his team because they aren't getting it done defensively. Now we've been talking about Merrill Hodge. Let's let, it, let us have his chance to defend himself. Merrill, <laughs> go ahead, pal. Well, and Rodney, to a guy who doesn't run crooked, <laughs> Tyrison, who took a heck of a shot. I, I checked him. I mean, he got a cut in the mouth, but he's going to be fine. And like all good football players, he'll be right back in the action. Back to you guys. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't take a shot at you. He didn't. I set him <laughs> up, too. All right, there's a look at Goodson. After all that, it's amazing. Just comes away with uh, a cut, a cut yeah. on the mouth. Yeah, he's a tough guy. That'd be a tough guy to play that game. That'd be a tough coach to coach it too. You know what, what Terry Bowden has gone through at Auburn. You win your first 20 ball games, and then people start talking about firing you because you only win seven. Another strong kick by Jared Holmes and Ron Thomas again forced to take an eight. The return has not been there for Army today. Well, this man needs to return for them. They need this man to get something going for them. Army's had a great season. That, that game against Navy was absolutely fantastic. And that man, Ron Makeda, was the reason why. And I'm sure right now you will not see any quit in this team. They're going to come fired up again, running the option, trying to knock off Auburn. Tough football again. School record, 10 wins for Army, making their first bowl appearance in eight years. Makeda on the keeper. Driven back and hit hard by Ricky Neal, his sixth stop of the afternoon. And he'll mark his forward progress to the 22. Well, the problem for Army right now is that Auburn defensively is just too fast. They are running past blocks. They're able to run down the outside of the option because Army doesn't have a guy who can just go 80 yards on you. Winding down the third quarter. Second and seven. Makeda in the pocket has plenty of running room. At the 25 and brought down at the 31 yard line. How about Ricky Neal? I'll tell you what, he covered a lot of ground. Ricky Neal, the inside linebacker, number 50. Well, Ricky Neal just showed you the speed that we're talking about. I mean, he's a guy that's 227 pounds, but watch how he gets out there and runs down Makeda. He's in the middle of the screen. You'll see him show up just after Makeda gets out to the left side here. Now Makeda takes off. Neal's going to show up. Neal shows up right there and closes the ground quickly. And that's what's happening to Army. They cannot run these guys. Makeda on the option and the pitch. Not much, maybe two. Well, there's that man again. <laughs> Guess what? The cannon. The end of the third quarter. <laughs> Auburn all smiles, leading Army by 32-7. Oh, a classic, classic moment here at the Independence Bowl. 
Three-star general. How many? He's doing some chest bumps. Yeah. And, uh, he was uh, leading the cheers. Three-star general chest bumping. Oh, it was classic. We'll show it to you here in just a second. Second down, seven. The hookup. Ron Thomas. Take you back here as we just came back from commercial. Who says that generals aren't fun? Check this out. <laughs> Dan Christie. <laughs> Three star general. Now he's going to take a break. Well, the, the thing you missed was that at the end of that, he gave a little chest bump there. Who said Army guys aren't fun? There you go. First and 10 Army at the 46. <laughs> Quarterback keeper Makeda. Oh, he took a spill at midfield at the 50. Makeda Antoine the Nolan. Stop by number 13, Antoine. Oh, McLeod. Jumps off that bench, and now he's uh, trying to get back in that serious yeah. mode. I, I had to explain <laughs> that to the coach. I was just talking to the TV cameras, That's coach. That's right. I didn't know I was on that team. Second down, five. A little misdirection. Hand off, Bobby Williams. He's got sprinter speed. One man to beat. Steps out at the 15-yard line. Bobby Williams is with the carry. Bobby Williams, a sophomore. Uh, this is the way you attack speed. You counter it. You get people going one way. Williams is here, and he's going to come around this way, and you're going to get action going back that way. Well, what happens with Auburn is they start going the wrong way. That's called the counter. They didn't even see him until it was too late. 34-yard pickup and a first down at the 15-yard line. Again, they're trying to get the Auburn defense to flow. Again, they, they come right back with yep. the same play, other side of the field. Yep, yep, you're exactly right. And that time, Ricky Neal missed a tackle. Hey, you know, he's the guy that's so fast, you know, was running around out there, number 50. Well, he ran again, and that time he ran right past Rizek. One way to counter. Speed, Speed yeah. yeah. Clock running, under 13 and a half minutes to play. Straight ahead. Demetrius Perry, and he was hit by Brumbaugh and Carson. Yeah, but, you know, Charles Dorsey, number 91, though, is the guy who made that play. I mean, defensive linemen who don't make tackles sometimes are up there making good plays, allowing their teammates to make tackles. And 91, Charles Dorsey did that this, this last time and has been doing it all game long. Doesn't get a lot of attention, though, unless you make the tackle, right? Third down and seven. Inside the five to the one. Touchdown. It was a late call, but Perry bulls his way in for his seventh touchdown of the season. But Demetrius Perry was the man who's been replacing Joe Hewitt. And Perry was the one who carried it in there has been an able replacement, not the same kind of runner. Only carried the ball 112 times this season to the 141 by Hewitt, but certainly nice run that play. Joseph Parker with the extra point, and he remains perfect on the season. 42 of 42. 12.44 to go here in Shreveport. Auburn with a 32-14 lead over Army. We'll be back. The kick, Robert Baker at the five. Baker to the 23, maybe the 24. I tell you, Robert Baker doesn't back off. No, no, and he didn't back off from that smoke either. <laughs> that wasn't fog he was running into, but just the after effects of the cannon or the howitzer that went off a little while ago. And Damian Craig has had the game of his life tonight. Talking to Bowden, his head coach, and his backup, Cooley. When, when uh, Damian Craig was injured, Cooley was quickly off the bench and warming up, but Auburn didn't have to go to him. And it's been Damian Craig all the way. First and 10 from the 23. Tigers have been effective on a quick out. What a big day for Willie Gaucher.
There's John Cooley who backs up Craig. Only throwing 38 passes on the season, a senior out of Sarasota. Well, he may get a chance to throw a couple of passes if this score continues the way the way it is. I'm sure Terry Bowden would give him a chance to get in the ball game after Damian Craig has done pretty much what he wanted to do with the Army Black Knights. Did you see Stephen King, number 60 in the middle of the screen? Kevin McLeod sure saw him. McLeod, number 43, the fullback. Yeah, well, you know, Stephen King can hit you. And he's going to show up and just make a big play. Sometimes linebackers miss these shots when they get them, but he didn't miss that one. That was the 26th first down for Auburn. That ties an Independence Bowl record. Pitch play, some running room. Rusty Williams. Stephen King again chased him down. Good pursuit for big number 60. Well, that's two great plays in a row. I mean, the last play he came up, made a big tackle. And this time he shows you how he can move. He's right here. Watch him go up that way. He's just going to beat the blocker and make the play. And linebackers have to take on people, but sometimes they also have to run past people. Stephen King did it that time to make that tackle on number three, Rusty Williams. Stephen King broke his wrist against Navy. He's uh, worn a cast. In practice and since fumble on the snap. Army says it's there, but no official call. Not one official steps in and says Auburn football. You know, one of the things that has troubled Auburn, there you see the cast on King. His right wrist is when he broke, broke a little bone in there. It's not the entire wrist, just a bone in there that he's broken. And you're going to see the fumble right here as there is a poor exchange between Craig and James Keeger. Looks like Keeger was trying to draw somebody offside and snapped it before Craig was ready. And he lost the ball. Estes was trying to get in there and get it. You know, one of the interesting things is that you look back at Auburn's losses to Georgia and Alabama, they had trouble running the ball in the fourth quarter to finish off the ball game. Well, the official has stepped in. The delay is because they want the band to quit playing. Well, who wants the band to quit playing? <laughs> the officials? Yeah, I don't. I don't understand. Uh, the army band there. Oh no! You got to let them play. And the crowd. Yeah. Now, the army uh, fans here say we don't like that, so they come well, up. Nobody and... does. <laughs> Damian Craig, the step, the drop, the throw, incomplete. What a what a stretch by Robert Baker. Tom Mullins over there on the far side providing coverage. But you know, how can you tell the band not to play? That's like telling these big offensive linemen you can't eat. Yeah, I mean, you know, those guys are dressed up, you know, it's New Year's Eve. They got all that noise over there. They've been shooting cannons. The band's got to play. Now, if you can shoot that cannon, yeah. you can play your horn. <laughs> That brings up fourth down and nine. Brad Miller watches the ball bounce. And Auburn will down it at the 17-yard line. That stops the clock with 10.25 to go here at the Independence Bowl. Auburn on top, 32-14. Trouble, Damian Craig down the sideline. He's going to walk in. Damian Craig touchdown. There he is, Damian Craig, with leading Auburn to a 32-14 lead over Army. Look at the numbers. Oh, is that a huge day? That ain't bad. No, 370 yards passing, two touchdowns, and he's ran for another 77. Army down 32-14 with 10-25 to play. And they continue to pound it out on the ground. Demetrius Perry 
a couple of yards to the 18. You know, Rod, Demetrius Perry's done a nice job filling in. And of course, you've mentioned they have really missed Hewitt at the fullback spot, but Perry has stuck his nose in there quite a bit. 72 yards on 16 carries. They go back the other way, and it was red. Oh, was it red. Right now, defensively, Auburn having their way. Marcellus Mostella. Yeah, but Jimmy Brumbaugh was the one who really had his way. We told you about the matchup that he was having with 55 Kyle Scott. Well, he won at that time. And Brumbaugh dominated on that play and disrupted it all by himself. Third down, 17. Makeda drops the throw, dumps it underneath to his tight end, Lesh Leshinsky. And the football, it's been tough to get the football into the tight end hand today. Yeah. Well, right now, Brum Brumbaugh is having a pretty good time because Scott is out. He's taking on the backup now, Rod Roddenmeyer, and he goes past him, but Roddenmeyer kind of trips him up there, and he also slips on the grass. Brumbaugh is just dominating right now. That brings up fourth down and 12, so Scott Lord back in for his fifth punt. Robert Baker at the 50. Baker's got a wall, flags are down, and Baker is stopped at the 27-yard line, but flags are back at midfield. Well, yeah, it's going to be an illegal block, a block in the back, and it was so blatant. It was almost as blatant as the one we saw in the first quarter. 34-yard punt, a 23-yard return, but it will come back. Yeah, yeah, there he is, Marlon Taylor. They caught him. They're telling him, if you don't see the numbers in front, the you cannot team, block. Illegal block in the back. Ten yards in the spot of the foul. First down. Hey, uh, coaches are telling them, you know, at this point in the season, you ought to know. Watch to the right of your screen. There he is, 26. Taylor, look at Goes right up to the guy, pushes him from behind. He has never been coached to do that. Now, sometimes you just get a little bit excited. You want to make a play, and you don't wait. Get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you block me in the back all the time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> First and 10 from the 43. 8.31 to go. Play action. Craig on the run, fires into traffic, and incomplete. He wanted Hicks poor, number 89. Pretty good throw. I mean, aren't you impressed with how Craig is able to roll to his left and throw the ball that strongly? And he's shown you that he has a lot of tools. And this Auburn team is going to be a pretty good one next season. We've talked about their youth, Craig, and they have a quarterback now coming back next year who's gotten a lot under his belt. Well, you know, you say the heat may be on Bowden, but with the youth, as you mentioned, the returns in 1997 and the leadership Craig will provide as a senior quarterback, watch out for Auburn. Marquise Cooper. Well, later tonight on ESPN, check it out. Timmy Duncan leads second-ranked Wake Forest against Keith Van Horn and the seventh-ranked running Utes of Utah from the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City, Utah, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific on ESPN. This is a really good early season matchup. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about Duncan and Van Horn, two guys that are likely to be lottery picks in the NBA. Watch them now when it's a little bit cheaper, huh? <laughs> Buy a ticket, yeah. go see them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's going to get more expensive when they get to it the NBA. It sure will. They're down at six. Clock running, 7.40 to go, fourth quarter. Damian Craig pulls up, wants the home run ball, floats it, and it's picked, picked off. Tommy Mullins down the sideline. Mullins at the 50, at the 40. If Mullins can hang on, he's got to beat Damian Craig. Oh, and Damian Craig came across with the right forearm with a little club at the end of it. 
but no penalty called. First interception for the senior out of Houston, Texas. Tom Mullins played a nice football game for Army today. 67-yard return. Well, this man isn't open right now, but Craig throws it anyway, and the ball hangs on him. He just doesn't get it out there. Nice pickoff by Mullins. Now watch the end of the play. Watch what Damian Craig does when he comes over to make the tackle. Watch the right arm. See if he tries to club him upside the head. Watch now. There, there it is. But, oh, it's the shoulder level. It's all right. Not as bad as it looked in real time. Army at the 17-yard line. Perry knocked down by Neal. He's in double digit for tackles with 10. Ricky Neal. And that's right at his season average. You know, you look at uh, linebackers and you see Spikes with 119 tackles and Ricky Neal at 111. And your two backers, your two middle linebackers, right? That's a 230 stops between the two of those guys. Yeah, hard-nosed guys. They can handle it, though. Three-yard gain, second down, seven. Straight ahead football. And gain tackling by Auburn. Demetrius Perry again. Spikes and Neal. You know, we talked about offensively what Auburn has coming back next year, but their defense, again, will lose one player, only one, number 47, Marcellus Mostella. Everybody else out there will be back for Auburn. Keep in mind, Craig, they lost three games that were very close. This team could have been 10-1. Third down and three, good point. Back the other way, misdirection, handoff, Bobby Williams inside the five, an army knocking on the door. Ricky Neal again with the tackle. His 12th stop of the day. Well, again, you know, we talked about speed, misdirection, bring it back this way. You get everybody going that way, and then they can't react quickly enough to make the play. You see the Auburn guys running to the left, and then you run the ball back to the right where they aren't. Good play. Nice, t uh, nice uh, block by Lashinsky to tie it in. Same play, touchdown. Bobby Williams. Two touchdowns for Williams. On the afternoon is 10th of the season. And it's 32-20. 5.20 to go. And it gets interesting. 5.50, pardon me. 5.50, a lot of time. Interesting. Now... If you're Army, obviously, you have to think about the onside kick. Get the point here and think about the onside kick, Craig. Joseph Parker. And his streak continues. 32-21 and a lot of time. Will an onside come our way? Come on back, we'll find out. Five fifty-two to play in the Independence Bowl. There's Williams, and they've cut this lead down to 11, 84 yards on 11 carries, 7.6 yards a, a pop, and a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, and you know they have a shot now. I mean, what they have to do is get the ball back, try the onside kick. Auburn is playing for it. If they get the ball back, they have a real shot here, Craig. Well, Joseph Parker has it teed up, and the Auburn Tigers are ready for the onside. They have. Nine men between the 45 and 50 yard line, 52 yard line. And it's going to be covered up. Covered up at the 45. Hicks Poor got it. Let's go downstairs in Merrill Hodge. Well, thanks, Craig. I'm with Nat three NASA astronauts, Bill MacArthur, right here, Colonel. You've been on two missions already. Can you kind of first introduce your two astronaut friends here and kind of talk about your two missions? Sure, we've got uh, Jeff Williams here on my left and then over here, uh, Pat Forrester. Um, we're here at the game because we're all three uh, West Point graduates. We're all in the Army and gosh, it's only five hours from Houston up here. So nothing could have kept us away from the game. Now the game is starting to become tight. So from the astronaut's perspective, what do you think they need to do now? Well, just like everything else, they need to really concentrate on the mission and make sure they don't make mistakes. Now, I know you guys have not been on the mission. You have not been in space, but you're training. What is that training like? 
Well, our training just keeping us busy in shuttle systems and operations and uh, learning how NASA operates. When do you expect to go into space? I would say it would be in the next three to four years, getting ready to help finish building the space station. Now, I know this. You guys have one of the rarest professions in the world. Maybe President, like you pointed out earlier, is the only other. But what it's like, to, what, what was the number that you were when you went into space? Well, I, I was the 302nd human being to leave the Earth's atmosphere and go into space. There have been about 350 uh, or so people in both the Russian and U.S. space programs and our partners who have been into space. Okay, Craig, so that means you were probably 345. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it took some time, but he, he, got he you. stung me, yeah. You, you have been out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> well, the space shuttle program and all those things from NASA. Well, I think that's right. You know, one of the things that has happened with the success that all the academies has had this, this season is that everyone has kind of looked at the country and said, well, you know, geez, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Under five minutes to play here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Fred Beasley, a victim of some slick turf. You know, as the temperatures begin to drop, Rod, turf gets a little, little slicker. Yeah, that's true. And right now, you got to use your timeouts if you're Army. You still have a shot. You got to stop and get the ball back. But look at the turf that you were talking about. It was already a little bit wet, a little soggy, and now as it gets darker, a little colder, it's a messier. Timeout, 4.34 to go here in Shreveport. 32-21 Auburn. 4th quarter, Independence Bowl, 4.34 to play. 11-point lead for Auburn. Black Knights. The Cadets, the Black Knights of Army. Second down 11 from the eye. And a whistle will stop play. I'm sure they're going to hit Auburn again. Legal procedure. Right snap. Ball start. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Well, tomorrow, Bowl Week continues on ESPN. Alabama battles Michigan in the Outback Bowl. The Big Ten takes on the SEC. And Gene Stallings will say his farewell to the Crimson Tide tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific on ESPN. I don't know about you, but I think I'm in front of the television with the Outback Bowl. I got the Rose Bowl after that. I'm a happy camper. Yep. Hey, this is uh, three TVs, a couple of TVs, you know, pizzas. Uh, uh. You got it. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's bad weather. I'm not going outside <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Second down at 16 for, for Auburn. Well, Army really has to think in terms of trying to get the ball out. 4.29 to go here. You know, they really aren't a team with a two-minute offense, so they need a turnover right now and a quick score if they're going to have a chance here, Fred. I had some clock problems up on the big scoreboard. They have it fixed. 434 officially remaining here. And the Independence Bowl. Rusty Williams on the pitch. To the 37-yard line. And I like that call by Rusty Terry Bobby. You know, go ahead and run the ball. Keep running time off the clock. Because he knows that the Army offense really can't score twice if he turns the ball back over to them with like three, three and a half minutes to go. Another timeout, and we'll step aside. 4.25 to go. We'll be back. A very calm Auburn bench leading 32-21 with 4.25 to go. Army spending their last timeout. Auburn was still one remaining if they need it. From the 37-yard line. Damian Craig, the quarterback, has gone the distance for Auburn today from the eye. Rusty Williams to the 30-yard line, and that will bring up a fourth down. And again, 
even when they don't need a first down, they just need to run the clock. They get good blocking up front again. You know, Victor Riley, 68, once again, doing what Terry Bowden wants him to do, clear out some room there just to keep the clock running. And Riley has had a tremendous day blocking. I mean, you saw them run behind him on that play that time, Greg. And Geno James, the redshirt freshman right next to him, they're number 78. A 297 pounder out of Montgomery, Alabama. And Victor Riley was a first team all SEC performer this season. I tell you, this Auburn team is going to be pretty good. You, you don't know what's going to happen in the, in the SEC. You got Tennessee probably losing Peyton Manning if all reports are right. Who knows what he's going to do? He goes to the NFL. If he leaves, Tennessee is a different team. And uh, Florida, who knows? Danny Werfel is gone, but they have a lot of talent down there every year. It will be interesting. I know Terry Bowden believes that his team will be much better next season than it was this year. He told us yesterday this was a disappointing season for him. He expected his team, even though it was young, to be better than 7-4. and four. Well, we've seen tonight what kind of performance they can put on. Well, tomorrow, make sure you tune in to ABC Sports. For the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all, you bet. Number two ranked Arizona State against fourth ranked Ohio State, New Year's Day, 430 Eastern on ABC Sports. Now, wouldn't that be something if you had Arizona State at 12 and 0 and Florida State at 12 and 0? Mm hmm. Now, I think the argument, you know, the thing is, the argument is they still really. With the alliance, there's still questions about who really would be number one. Of yeah. course, if that's a scenario that plays yeah, out. Yeah, but, you know, so what? You know, I mean, those guys, that uh, if that works out that way, those, both those teams deserve to be called national champs. Interesting to see how the polls will finally come out. AP and CNN USA today, the coaches poll. Fourth down, seven play action. Damian Craig over the middle and complete through behind. Willie Gosset, who has been very effective today as a wide receiver. So that stops the clock with 337 to go. Well, Damian Craig has had plenty of time all day, and that's really what's been the difference for him. You see him there again, plenty of pocket protection, and he has a lane right down the middle to throw the football a little bit behind the receiver that time. But that's been the story of the ball game. Damian Craig has had all day. Army with the football rod, but no timeouts remaining. 3.37 to go. Down 11. Complete. Brezik. Clock runs, Rod with 320 and counting. Yeah, this is real tough for, for Army right now. I mean, they, they don't have the kind of offense that Auburn has. Little delay draw up the middle. Bobby Williams, maybe a yard to the 37. Tackled by Brumbaugh. What Brumbaugh with nine stops from that nose guard position. Make sure you stick around. Coming up next, Sports Center. We'll talk about Cowboy Blues, an update there. Bowl highlights, Kentucky, Louisville. We're talking college basketball. Bob Lee and Charlie Steiner standing by with Sports Center. Ron Thomas stays inbounds, and that's not good news for Army because the clock now coming up on the two and a half minute mark. Yeah, and they're short of a first down. It's fourth down for them, too. I mean, if they don't pick this up, it's really lights out for Army. And the clock will stop if they pick up the first down by running it. Fourth and one. A counter misdirection play very effective for Army Jim on the day. Brizick, the, the ball Army. carrier, and a first down for Army. As you mentioned, stops the clock as they reset the chains with 2.12 to go. Yeah, clock's going to start once again as soon as the official signals it. Army again, no timeouts left. They need two scores. Makeda slingshots it in the middle. Big gainer. 
And Makeda hooks up with Rod Richardson. Well, that's because a defensive back fell down because he slipped. Had he not slipped, he could have made the play. 29 it yards. It was Ware who fell down back there, and that's why they were able to complete the pass. Two minutes to play. First and 10 from the Auburn 29-yard line. Makeda, down he goes. Uh, I don't know about that one. I mean, you just complete a long pass to give yourself a first down. Your quarterback's feeling pretty good. I don't think you run the option there. I, I think you come back and you keep throwing it. You have, you're running out of time now. You need two scores. Mark Smith broke through to make the tackle. Makeda splits the seam. Touchdown, Army. Rod Richardson. Hold on. There is no quit in the cadets. A 30-yard touchdown pass to Rod Richardson, the backup man. Second touchdown of the season for the sophomore out of Portsmouth, Virginia. And the cadets will line up and go for two. A minute 27 to play. Misdirection, hello. Bobby Williams. And this, all of a sudden, Rod, is a three-point football game. Yeah, all you need is a field goal, and you're going to try the onside kick. And all of a sudden, it turned around. There's a shot. And go back and look at the touchdown, Craig, and you'll see Richardson really makes a nice play. He's out here. He's going to run an inside route here. Watch the safety as he comes over. He gets tricked out of the middle. And a nice throw by Makeda makes it such that he's able to go ahead and get into the end zone. Safety's gone. Now Richardson over the middle, catches the ball nicely, runs on in for the score. 30-yard sprint. And now another attempt at the onside. Well, here's the two-point play. Once again, the misdirection. Get the speedy guys going one way, run it back the other way on them. Again, Williams is the man who picked it up. An army down by three points with a minute 27 to go here. The cadets moved 70 yards, six plays, and they did it in a hurry, and they did it with no timeouts. Yeah. 2.10 off the clock, so they got it with 3.37 to play. And they go, they go 70 yards in six plays. Yeah, two key mistakes in the secondary for Auburn. Guy falling down and a guy moving out of position. Josh Parker has it teed up. They got it. They had, they had a, a shot distance. at it. Who's got it? They had a shot at it. They had a shot at it, Craig. Uh, both teams. Yeah. Army. Yeah, Army got with it. the football. Well, it looked like they had a shot at it. That ball was taking forever to go the 10 yards. And when it finally went 10 yards, there were a number of players around. But number 22, Matt Rogers, was at the bottom of the pile. He came up with it. Watch the left side of your screen. Watch once the ball crosses the 10-yard marker. All of the Army players are around there. It bounces off an Auburn player, and Rodgers gets in there to pick it up. It was Hicks Poor who tried to pick up the ball, and it bounced off of him. A minute 22. Army down three. No timeout. Makeda pumps to the near side. The give and go. Going deep over the middle. Nearly intercepted. Brad Ware back on coverage, but... Makeda wanted Rod Richardson, and that stops the clock with 1.15 to play. Oh, yeah, you know, and Makeda had him out there. He had his man out there. He held the ball a little bit too long, and he threw it towards the safety to the middle. Had he brought it outside, they might have picked something up there. Well, one stat that Bowden will not really like is the 22 points given up defensively. And yet, the offense has sputtered. They have not scored in this quarter. Yeah, the Army has been huge in the fourth quarter here tonight. 
Play action to go to the near side. Well, Bobby Williams breaks the tackle inside the 45 to the 42-yard line. That will stop the clock. They'll reset the chains with 108 to go. You know, they don't need a touchdown here. They can send this thing into overtime with the field goal. And they probably need to go about another 15, 17 yards to have a real good shot at it. Well, if you look at Joseph Parker, his longest kick of the season, 45. Oh, my, what a catch. Bobby Williams at the 13-yard line. And how did he hang on to that one? And how did that man get that ball in there? Brad Ware with a big hit. 28-yard pickup. Could this be a miracle comeback for the cadets of Army? 55 seconds left to play, and they have done this with no timeout. And they really have done it. It's, it was a very similar play to what they did in the first half. And it was Williams again who made the catch in the first half. He made a big win just now. First and 10 from the 14. And we have a player down. Now let's go back to the big catch. Here's Williams right here. He's going to come on out here and then just go up and watch the safety come over a little bit late. And then the great pass by Ronnie Makeda to get it in there in between the two defenders. You see the ball. He's got to drop it right in there. And he does a perfect job against the two deep coverage. Great catch. Williams hanging on when Brad Ware came over with the big hit. Player down. Happened to be Bobby Williams. He did take a shot. And the question you bring up, how do you hang on after a hit like that? Uh, you talk about doing it for the team there. I mean, he knew he was going to take a pop, and he just took it. Sports Center is coming up. Bob Lee, Charlie Steiner. Williams now with three receptions, 75 yards, 55 seconds. I go back to the option. I run the option here. Makeda. Straight up the middle to the 10 yard line. Now, if they have to, of course, you're thinking field position for the field goal. Right, and they can always spike the ball, too. They have a second down now. The clock should be stopped because the guys are milling around. Yeah, they're going to stop the clock now. They lost about three or four seconds there when they probably should have stopped the clock. Okay, so you've gone ahead and you spiked the ball. Now you've got a third down here, Craig. You go ahead and take a shot at the end zone if you're happy with where you are on the field. If their place kicker likes where the ball is, I think you go ahead and take a shot to the end zone. If he doesn't like where it is, I think you go ahead and you run the ball again to make sure you wind up with a dead-on shot that he likes. I mean, you've come this far back. you got to like your chances in overtime. And remember, Craig, this is the field goal post that's crooked. And it's leaning. This will be a 27-yard field goal attempt. Good snap. The kick is up. And no good. A 27-yarder. He missed it. And no one feels like Joseph Parker. You know, the scenario was perfect. 18 of 21, only missed three field goals the entire season. And he can't find it from 27 yards. Well, they were a little bit rushed there. They went for it on third down instead of a fourth down. I thought we talked about maybe the shot, taking a shot in the end zone, and if you didn't get it, then come out and kicking. They had no more timeouts left, so they couldn't run the ball back to the middle of the field so they went ahead and did it but look at this man here Bob Sutton talking to his young kicker telling him it ain't his fault that they don't win the ball game. Hey, class act yeah, right there all the way a class act and that tells you I can't believe I just missed that kick and joy for Auburn. And disappointment on the other side. 
Nevertheless, a stirring comeback by Army. They were in position to tie the ball game up and send it into overtime. It just didn't happen. Hey, I want to thank everybody on the ESPN crew. Brian Carter, our producer. John McDonough, our director. Our spotter, Kim Anderson. Stats all season long, Tom Barbary. Rod's been a pleasure. Merrill Hodge. The final from the Independence Bowl. Auburn in a thriller over Army, 32-29. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Stay tuned. Up next, Sports Center with Bob Lee and Charlie Steiner. Good night from Shreveport. <laughs>